give you the Willies. Number 55, Willie McGinnis. His specialty, party crashing. Arizona State's Bruce Snyder isn't certain which running back we'll see tonight. Number one tailback Mario Bates is gone. So too is George Montgomery. And Jerome Davison is sporting a costume he could do without. Enter Kevin Galbraith, who last week dug a 183-yard grave for UCLA. At quarterback Grady Benton, a freshman phenom, and it just might be bright night for the favored Trojans. <laughs> You are looking live at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, where Prime Network presents the Pac-10 Game of the Week. Today, the Arizona State Sun Devils host the 13th-ranked Trojans of Southern California. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Phil Stone. Happy Halloween. Four weeks ago, neither Arizona State nor Southern California appear to have a ghost of a chance at playing in a bowl game. But since that time, both of these clubs have been gobbling victories, three to be exact, for both the Sun Devils and the Trojans. With me on our telecast, as he has been throughout this 92 Pac-10 season, is Russ Francis. And Russ, the odds makers say the Trojans by a handful. Now, we talked to Bruce Snyder yesterday, and he said, oh, yeah, bring on Southern Cal. Well, Phil, this is a huge, huge game for both teams. USC is right behind Washington with just one conference loss. Arizona State, on the other hand, with two losses desperately needs to win this game to have a chance at any postseason bowl game. Well, if the Sun Devils hope to upset Southern California this afternoon, they had better get it done coming out of the locker room. Opponents have done well in the first and third period, Russ, but once that Trojan horse breaks into a full gallop, you had better be leading or you better get out of the way. <laughs> well, Arizona State, on the other hand, their main strength has been their defense. But in the last three weeks, they found their offense to create the balance that makes them number three in the Pac-10 total offense, and they've hung in their tough Number two in Pac-10 total defense, allowing just 262 yards a game. You know, last week, Arizona State found out that sometimes attrition pays rich dividends. Case in point, their running back core, as we told you, has been decimated with injuries. And because of that, they found a seldom-used fifth-year senior. And boy, what a find. This guy is something. Kevin Galbraith had a game last week that dreams are made of. But there's no, no dream is Kevin Galbraith. You see the numbers here. He had more yards in one game than he did his entire career previous to that game. And the Sun Devils rest of all also found a gold nugget at quarterback, and he's just a freshman. Freshman Grady Benton, I mean, he has started slow like his team did, but he's picked up a lot of speed. He's number one in the Pac-10 and number three in the nation in passing efficiency. You know, in high school, Curtis Conway's team, his junior and senior year, scored a total of 82 touchdowns. Conway himself accounted for 62 of those TDs over a 24-month span. I would say that it is safe to say he is a bona fide megastar. Huh. He certainly is, and if he remains healthy, we might just be looking at USC's Heisman candidate for 1993. Conway is dangerous in so many ways. He's SC's top receiver. He's their kickoff and punt return guy. He has been known to carry and throw the ball out of the backfield. Well, one team, Russ, is coming into this ball game with one of those high-gloss, Simonized finishes, while the other one resembles one of those cars you drive, kind of like the <laughs> demolition derby type of automobiles. Let's go down to the third man on our telecast team, Mike Haynes. He has some thoughts on the injury quotient, Mike. Well, Phil, this is the time of year when injuries can really haunt a football team, and the Sun Devils are no exception. You know, it's really spooky when you think about how many tailbacks they've lost to injuries, but they've lost several other players as well. Demario Vaughn, an outstanding offensive lineman, will be severely missed, along with Justin Drago, an inside linebacker. Now, USC, on the other hand, had been remarkably injury-free, but this week they'll be playing without two of their offensive linemen and without Lamont Hollenquist, one of their defensive standouts. Now, for Arizona State, with several of their key players out today, I don't know. Well, you know, it would be a sweet, sweet treat for them if they could upset the Trojans today. Indeed it would, Mike. Well, Russ, the masquerading is over. There are a lot of bowl representatives here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. I would say a, so a solid showing is simply a must for the Trojans and the Devils. Well, Phil, both coaches are saying th this is going to be a physical battle of epic proportions, and who would think of anything less with the guys from Troy? And what I want to know, the question is, is that horse loaded up or not? Arizona State is saying not. <laughs> well, tonight, it's the Sun Devils and the Trojans, ranked number 13th in the nation. That is our Pac-10 Game of the Week. All right, all right. The Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. 
Buy Diet Pepsi with 100% AHA. You got the right one, baby. AHA. By Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. By new Coors Dry, it's double chilled for a finish as clean as ice. Try Coors Dry and feel the chill. By your Southern California Chevrolet and Geo dealer. And by Chevron, simply smarter. A gorgeous autumn afternoon at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Sparky says he's ready. The weather is certainly cooperated. Temperature in the high 70s. Wind will not be a factor in this ball game. And the closest rain is somewhere over Hawaii. Now well, these teams have met 10 times since Arizona State joined the Pac-10. ASU holds a six to four edge. For Southern California, Larry Smith in his sixth year as head coach of the Trojans. An incredible 31-10-1 mark against the Pac-10 Conference. And across the sideline, his maiden voyage as head coach of Arizona State, formerly at Cal, and boy, what a career he had with the Golden Bears. Bruce Snyder, and what a huge win this would be if he could get it. And there's the man we're gonna be watching, Curtis Conway, as Southern California gets set to receive. He is just 13 yards behind the legendary Anthony Davis on Southern California's all-time kick return yardage list. Today's kickoff is brought to you by Coors. Mike Ritchie is set to let it fly, the senior from Tempe, Arizona. And we are underway here on the desert floor. Kind of a squib kick finds its way near the sideline. It'll go into the end zone. Conway chases it down, and he'll go down on a knee. And for Curtis Conway, that run after Anthony Davis's record will have to wait as Southern California will take it at their own 20-yard line. And there is the sophomore out of El Toro High School in Mission Viejo, California, quarterback Rob Johnson, 6'4", 210 pounds. And he has done quite a job over the last three weeks. The man he will be trying to get the ball to with a great amount of frequency, number three, Curtis Conway. The offensive line, we will be looking at the two guard positions. Clay Hattaball and Robert Loya are playing in place of Joel Crisman and Chris Polak. First down, Southern California at their own 20. They come from the I formation. Bender and Estes Creighton are the running backs. Long snap count. Play action. Johnson, he's looking for all of it right away and overthrows Curtis Conway. Great coverage. Kevin Minifield was back. He's the guy we'll be talking about all afternoon long as he is the man who will more often than not draw Curtis Conway. The Arizona State defense, they play the 4-3. And boy, what a couple of great down linemen they have in Shantae Carver and Brian Hooks. The linebacking core, Brett Wallerstadt, number 44, one of the very best in all of the Pac-10. And that secondary is key, we told you, by Kevin Minifield, who wears number three. Second down and 10. Again, the Trojans come from the eye at their own 20-yard line, just underway here from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Student body right. It is Estris Quinton. He tries to turn the corner, and he is smothered at the 21-yard line. Great pursuit by the free safety, Adam Brass, the senior from Laguna Niguel, California. Boy, he came a long way to get to Creighton. Well, they're streaming this play out, Phil, and Brass is coming up, just supporting, filling in. He's the last guy who's, you know, and he gets past Brass, and it's a long run upfield. Now on third and a bundle, Conway goes wide to the left. He is picked up out on the far side by Lenny McGill, the right corner. Arizona State looks as if they are in man coverage. Johnson looking at Conway, throws for Curtis, he's got it! Dives to the 36-yard line, he's got the first down. Boy, what a pattern Conway made on Lenny McGill. A lot of times you talk about the receiver turning the defender around. In that case, Conway did quite a bit of turning himself, trying to get back to that football. It's just sort of a basic 12, about 12, 14-yard hook pattern to the outside. Johnson getting a lot of heat up the middle, got it off just in time to get to Conway. Conway, he is Jutta Jr. out of Hawthorne High School in Los Angeles. Wide to the right is Larry Wallace as Conway has checked out the ball game. First down, SC at the 36. That's Chris Creighton, lots of running room across the 45, near the 46. Again, it was
was Adam Brass on the tackle. Came from his free safety spot. He didn't have far to get to Creighton because Creighton was well into that Arizona State secondary. When we talked to Coach Smith yesterday, Phil, he was telling us that what, I mean, everybody's talking about the receivers they have in Conway and Morton. He said, we really have to balance this offense out with a good, solid running game. He's showing that early in the game. Wide to the right is Travis Hanna. Conway goes wide to the left. First down, SC at their own 48-yard line. SC was Creighton. He's across the midfield stripe again into that Sun Devil secondary, and that is a place where Bruce Snyder does not want those Trojan tailbacks to be. We're going to see a lot of that, I think, this afternoon in that the USC running backs are going to spread out that Arizona State defense. They're going to the right side over by Tony Baselli, number 71. He's their top offensive guy on the line. They spread him out. That gives the running back time to kick a hole and cut back as they do on so many of these plays that appear to be going to the outside. Second down in three. They have a Conway flanker around in where Conway throws a pass, and this is where they like to use it. Conway won't come in motion this time. We've got flags down as Rob Johnson went back to pass. This will go against Southern California. Dead ball. Full start. Offense. Repeat second down. Well, the Gremlins have struck early, Phil, and uh, it's going to take that type of play on, on behalf of SC for Arizona State to kind of get going at the beginning of the game. As you said at the beginning of the show, they're going to need to be hitting and tackling out of the gate to have a chance of winning this football game. Trojans again from the eye on second down at eight. The ball to the midfield stripe. Again, it is SS Clayton. He doesn't get a lot. He'll move it across the midfield stripe into about the 48-yard line before running into Brian Hooks, the senior out of Tempe. He has already forced a trail of fumbles, has four sacks rust, and eight more stops behind the line. Boy, what a force on that defensive line. Well, he's the guy along with Sean Carver, number 98, and Israel Stanley, number nine. They're trying to shield and protect uh, number 44, Brett Wallerstadt, who's been injured a little bit. He's had a little lower back problem, but they need to let him run free to fill up those gaps to take on the running back. Boyd Morton and Curtis Conway, a couple of flying receivers are wide to the left. On third down, now and six. Johnson looks right, is cut from behind and tackled by Brian Hooks. Sack number five, and it comes early here in the first quarter. Well, you mentioned he's a big guy, 6'3", 270 pounds senior, Hooks number 95. This is just flat foot speed. You see here Johnson trying to take off. This is getting about his shoelaces. Southern California faced with a fourth and ten since John Stonehouse into the ball game. The freshman from Pasadena averaging just over 38 yards a punt, his longest 59. And back at his own 15-yard line is Eric Gulliford. A high spiraling punt. Gulliford moves up. Let's it roll into the end zone. Will it get there? The official says yes. It touched the goal line and came back out just inches away from being what would have been a spectacular punt for that young man right there. Well, he's got a brother up at Stanford that does the same thing uh, kicking, and they're both pretty darn good, and, and that's a real art, you know, getting it right down there, right as close as you can to the end line without it going in. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Here comes Grady Benton. Russ talked about him at the outset of our telecast. He is truly a great young star in this Pac-10 conference, a redshirt freshman that gives goes straight ahead, Kevin Galbraith. He carried the ball 44 times a week ago against UCLA, and he'll pick up two, maybe three. And there is Grady Benton, the freshman from right here in the Phoenix area. Youngest of six children. And the guys who will be getting the ball to, number 34, Kevin Galbraith, and number 12, Eric Gulliford. And the offensive line, it's a good one. Not overwhelmingly powerful, but a good one. We will be watching Greg Thurston, number 73, at left tackle. He is playing in pay place of DeMario Vaughn, who was out for the year. And we have got a Southern California Trojan injury. It is Thomas Holland, the defensive tackle on the right side. And that's a spot, uh, Russ Francis, where Southern California is also already a bit thin. Well, they're relying so much on those up-front guys to give Willie McGinnis and Brian Williams, Mike Salmon, those guys room to run, and it looks like it's a left wrist. He's kind of favoring that. Uh, that's the type of thing that usually a, a guy on the line can sort of tape up and keep going. Well, they have already lost the services of Elik Mahone, 
who was out of this ball game. And now if they lose Thomas Howard, or Thomas Holland, pardon me, that brings them down to just four offensive linemen. Make it five. Hens, McDaniels, Jones, Holland, and Webb. And Holland would be out that before. Quick pass. It is cut out at the 26-yard line by Clyde McCoy. And he is hit instantly. <laughs> Southern California's defense, they favor what they call a 3-4. In essence, it's a, about a seven-man front. Holland is one of the fellows who keys it. It will be interesting to see if he can answer the call. What a great linebacking course. Salmon, Cobb, Brian Williams, and Willie McGinnis. In the defensive secondary, number nine, Stevon Case leads it. On third down in a couple, it was Galbraith again. He'll be short of the first down, and it is number 55, McGinnis, who moves in to drop Galbraith. We saw early in that series that the extra tight end staying in and blocking on the uh, for pass protection for the quarterback. SC's got 28 QB sacks. I think you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, Arizona State trying to protect Brady uh, as much as they can with a back or a tight end. And again, using two tight ends, going for that third down conversion. Steve Roush on fourth down and less than one has come into the ball game for Arizona State to boot it away. A good average, just over 40 yards. And the man back to receive, number, tw number three, Curtis Conway standing at his own 25-yard line. No rush at all. Roush, not a particularly good kick. Conway moves up, makes the catch. Comes to the near side, crosses the 40-yard line, finds a hole, and is caught at the ankles and dropped at the 47-yard line. The ball popped loose, but Conway was down. Good tackle by Lenny McGill. That stops the clock with nine minutes and 17 seconds to play in the first quarter from Arizona. Good crowd on hand here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. 9.17 to play on the first quarter. Neither team able to do much on their first possessions. Southern California has it after the punt return by Curtis Conway. Great field position, first and 10 at their own 47-yard line. Again from the eye, Conway on the flanker around pursuit from the backside, and he's dropped. Oh, Brett Wallerstadt. Wallerstadt, that is the 72nd, count them, 72 tackles this year. Well, you remember yesterday, Phil, we were sitting in Bruce Snyder's office, and Brett came in, and he kind of just, we barely saw him, he kind of gave the thumbs up sign to Coach Snyder, saying, I'm going to be there, and boy, is he. Coming from behind to catch Curtis Conway is not an easy task for anybody, especially with a sore back. Yeah, didn't practice all week long, got a back sprain, but uh, says he is ready, and showed signs of it right there. That's Chris Creighton. To the left side, wants to turn the corner. Here comes Kevin Minifield, and he cuts his legs out from under him. Creighton got back to about the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and a long nine. And the guy that really helped that play out, too, is Mark Brown, number 30, the outside linebacker. Yanni Jackson, the tight end. SC went with two tight ends, as they've been doing more and more of each week. Number 88. He, he tried to string Brown out, number 30, but Brown holding his ground, giving time for Minifield to come up to make the tackle. Johnny Morton wide to the left. Curtis Conway comes to the right, and he has picked up one-on-one -on -one by Kevin Minifield. Number three on number three. Johnson looking Conway's direction. Wants to pull the trigger. Can't do it. And oh, is he hit and hit hard by Mark Brown. Woo. You know, Mike, that might have been the, uh, the best thing that could have happened to Rob Johnson because you see him as he goes a little bit to his right over here. There's a guy by number, number 98. Dante Carver is trailing him from behind. He needs just one more sack to equal the record at Arizona State, and he follows him all the way across field before number 30, Mark Brown, comes up to level him. You see Shante coming right from behind here. He's got such a quick start off the ball. Stonehouse handles the high snap and puts it up the elevator chute. Gulliford calling for a fair catch at the 15-yard line, and he fields it flawlessly. So with seven minutes and 17 seconds to play, Arizona State will have the football for the second time when we return. Let's go down to the sidelines now and Mike Eames. Michael? Well, Phil, Thomas Holland, the starting defensive lineman for the Trojans, they're taking him to the locker room right now. He was injured on the last defensive series of plays. It looks like his left wrist. They're going to x-ray it. We'll let you know as soon as we know something down here on the field. Sun Devils with the football. Kevin Galbraith was hit right at the line of scrimmage. Nova heads to the 18-yard line. We'll see where the officials mark that forward progress, and they'll give him the three yards. Well, they're calling it two. 
Al Galbert, the 5'10 senior, played his high school ball right here in Phoenix at Maryvale High School. What a great team player Galbert has been over the years. Hasn't seen a lot of action. Well, there's a guy right there who was destined to see a whole bunch of action for Arizona State. Freshman Grady Benton, second and eight. Benton under pressure throws. It is caught. Terrific catch by Bob Fisher, the tight end. That is the 14th catch of the year for the tight end, and he is driven out of bounds by Jason Oliver. Well, that kind of size, he's 6'5", 240 pounds. He, when he turns his back to Oliver, there's just no way for the defensive back to get over him to get to the football. And a real nice touch pass by Benton. Russ, you talked at the outset of our telecast about Grady Benton, number one in the Pac-10 in passing efficiency, number three in the nation, hitting 73%. That is astonishing. Benton looks again. Cut. Gulliford's got it. Oh, what a move across the 30-yard line. He'll pick up five, maybe six. And he is jumped on by Gerald Henry. Also with help from Jason Seahorn. Seahorn, the junior out of Mount Shasta High School and Shasta Community College. But Eric Gulliford, he's a senior. Played his high school ball here in Peoria, Arizona, suburb of Phoenix. Gulliford splits wide to the left. The pitch comes to the near side. Gallagher. Good spin across the 36 out to the 37. What a move he put on Jeff Cobb before Mike Salmon could run him down. This is one of those deals that's all heart. There's no, really nothing there. Goblin's just trying to find a hole any way he can. He hits her upright into the hole and then spins to get the first down. For Arizona State, their first first down of the game. We have played, correction, second first down of the game, and we've played almost 10 minutes here in the first period. Of all nosing, the 36-yard line. Benton eludes McGinnis, still on his feet. Now throws and throws it out of bounds. Wise decision by Benton. Willie McGinnis was the guy bearing down. There's a flag down on the far side of the field at the 30-yard line. Well, we talked to Coach Snyder, number 35, here who got in there it looked like it might have been a little bit uh, late with jeff cop the linebacker but when we talked to coach snyder he said one of the things that we've been telling benton to do is hey don't eat the ball if you get rid of it he's so competitive he wants to make the play happen but if you can't get it to the guy if you can't get upfield yourself unload it get rid of it which is what he did on that play and this is going to go against Holding arizona state offense, 10 yard penalty repeat first down that's what happens when your quarterback's in trouble. You're back there and you think maybe a guy like Cop, linebacker, may be getting a shot at him. Somebody evidently is worried about uh, Benton getting hurt, so he held when he should have. So now it'll be first down in 27 as that penalty marked off from the point of the infraction was a 17-yard penalty. There's Galbraith, and he doesn't find much at all as he tries to take it up behind Craig Ritter and Jeff Kaiser on the right side. We're going to see what we've been seeing all year long in the Pac-10 field, that seven and eight man front. SC's supposed to have like a 4-3 defense, but they put five, six, seven, eight guys on the line. They're going to test Arizona State, who's been getting 205 yards rushing per game. They're going to test them early, especially back here on their own side of the field. Now that's the situation with just over five minutes to play in the first period. Here's the spread offense by the Sun Devils, Benton with time. He's got room to run it in. for the redshirt freshman from Mesa, Arizona. Watch this guy when he decides to take off. When he decides nobody's home, listen, I've got to make this happen by myself. This guy can run. He's 6'2", 185 pounds. They talk about their backup quarterback, Garrett McGee, being able to run with the football. Benton showing, give me a chance, I can too. What a great athlete. There was one game he played in high school ball right here in Arizona, Russ. He had five interceptions as a defensive back. Quick pass. Over the middle, it goes to Gulliford. He'll be stopped short of the first down. Quick look in, gains a yard, maybe two. It'll be fourth down and four. Stephon Pace sniffed it out beautifully for the Trojans. And the Sun Devils are going to have to get rid of the football once again. And Steve Roush is on. Fourth and two, the ball just shy of the 45. And Conway is back at his own 12. Arizona State has not been particularly good on their punt coverage team. Oh, what a punt by Roush. Into the end 
zone it goes, and you can be sure Bruce Snyder has just taken a huge sigh of relief. 3.49 to play, first period. We're coming back in a moment. to play in the first period on this Halloween 1992. The Trojans and the Sun Devils are scoreless. Southern Cal has the football at their own 20-yard line as they come from the eye. West Bend to the fullback is the upback. The tailback is Estris Creighton. Creighton, left side. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Spins out to the 24. First man that got to him was Brett Wallerstead. He couldn't hold him, but Adam Brass could. And again, USC coming out in that two tight end formation. Two guys in the backfield, Conway out wide. They're going to, you know, th th we're going to see that. They're going to be punching the ball right at Arizona State's defense, which has been the strength of the Sun Devil team so far this year. They're going to hit him with two tight ends, first, second down. Second down and six. Johnny Jackson, the tight end in motion, straight ahead it goes, and Creighton dives for the first down at the 33-yard line. And again, it is the free safety, Adam Brass. It appears as if he is going to be a very, very busy man today. Well, it almost looks like it's going to be a sweep out here, but Creighton just taking you right up the middle. You'll see all these blocks being spread out on both sides. That's going to spread and weaken that Arizona State defense. Creighton looking at, the, at one point here like he almost tripped or fell down. He's kind of lunging here to make it to the first down, which he did. A first down at the 33-yard line. Again, two tight ends for SC. It goes straight ahead. That's Chris Creighton, and he's not going anywhere this time. Shante Carver knocked him down. With help from Kendall Ryan, Shante Carver, number 98. Here's a guy who runs on ever-ready batteries. This man never, ever gets tired. Well, if you watch him on that slow-motion replay, he's the first guy off the football. Coach Snyder said this guy's just got a knack for knowing when the ball is going to get snapped. And for an offensive guy trying to block him, that'll drive you crazy. Second down and 10. The ball at the 33 again. That is Johnny Jackson in motion. Rob Johnson, good play action. Comes near side. Chased. Throws it away. Partisan fans want intentional grounding. Won't happen because Bradford Banta, the tight end, was in the neighborhood while Shantae Carver was chasing Rob Johnson for all he was worth. <laughs> well, you know, you'll watch Conte, uh, Shantae Carver coming from your left here. Coach Snyder again saying this guy runs all over the field. He never gets tired, and he's showing why. He's, the last two or three plays, he's made that run all the way from sideline to sideline. He is picking up speed just about gets there in time. Johnson doing a good job of just getting that ball gone. Plays like another former Arizona State legend, Vernon Maxwell. He's the guy who holds that sack record that Carver's after today. Third down, now and 10 from the 33. Johnson looking for Johnny Morton, comes to the near side. He overthrows Travis Hanna. Gavin Hill with great pressure on Rob Johnson. Well, he also saw great pressure on Morton there, excuse me, on Travis uh, Hanna, just not giving him any chance to get back to the football. I mean, the ball was thrown a little bit to his outside, but had that pressure not been there, he would have had a chance to catch it. Now here is Stonehouse again. He's averaging just over 42 yards today, the two times he has driven at airborne. Gulliver awaits the punt. And Eric may have a return. No, he signals for the fair catch at the 30-yard line. A 38-yard punt. It comes with 2.01 to play in the opening stanza from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Now the standings in the Pac-10 as we come into this ball game this afternoon. Washington won today. They are 5-0, 8-0 overall. You look at Washington State, 3-1. SC right behind them, 3-1. And, and the Wildcats of Arizona, who will play later tonight against New Mexico State, 3-1-1. And, and in comes... Stanford, who lost huge today to Washington up at Husky Stadium. First down, Arizona State, as that Sun Devil defense takes a seat. Backwards pass, watch it. Downfield it goes, and is almost intercepted. Troy Rauer, who started the first game for Arizona State against Washington, had lined up, took the backwards pass from Grady Benton and tried to deliver it downfield in work. 
Well, you see Benton just tossing it out to Rar. He's getting a lot of pressure here from Kopp, and he just really doesn't get much on this football. Not that uh, Belford had any any room to move on Jason Oliver. He was just sort of blanketed at the same time. Second and ten from the 31-yard line. 1.54 to play in the first quarter. McGinnis, it'll be an offside call. Free play for Arizona State. It is caught. Gulliford had to come back and get it, and what a catch it was. A pickup of 12. It'll be a first down. Arizona State will unquestionably decline the penalty. It was offside against Willie McGinnis. Boy, and Benton showing again great poise and pinpointing that ball in there. Gulliford having to come back a little bit for it. Benton just drills it. Offside. That is the sign Defense. of a good receiver. Eric Benton Gulliford there. Line. First down. Showing he can come back and make the adjustment to catch that ball for the first down. That is the 30th catch for Gulliford this year. Last year against Southern California, he had four catches for over 100 yards. It's about 26 yards a catch a year ago against the Trojans. Also had a touchdown. Galbraith loses the football and falls on it. Whoa, boy. I'll tell you, when you drop your trick-or-treat bag, the catch is going to fall out. You think uh, Coach Snyder took a deep breath right about there? Well, I'll tell you what, that was a good bounce for Arizona State. These things happen, and right now, Galbraith is saying, oh, no, I've got to get a hold of this thing. And he just gets it just in time because there's a bunch of SC guys coming up to uh, take possession of the bag of candy. Yeah, loss of one. It's now second down at 11. Again, Benton eludes Mike Salmon. What's the receiver down? The end of it is almost intercepted, and the flag is down. It's going to be pass interference. I believe against Gerald Henry. Clyde McCoy, the intended receiver, was mad as a hornet. You know, a lot of things get mixed up when you're going downfield here, and uh, Henry number 26 and McCoy 83, they were all tangled up. Legs and arms flying all over the place. I think the officials, I think you're right, Phil, it's going to come up against USC in favor of Arizona State. They need that kind of help early in the game. <laughs> You know, at the beginning of this game, we were looking at a number as we see Henry sort of sort of bumping into McCoy. It looked like he might have elbowed him just a little bit there at the end. But the Arizona State's the team has been having problems with penalties. They've been penalized for 653 yards so far this year versus their opponents have only been penalized 459. It's going in their favor right now. Quick snap count. Straight ahead it goes. Inside the 40-yard line goes Jerome Davison. We did not think we'd see Jerome Davison. He went out last week on Arizona State's first series against UCLA with an ankle injury. You can see him hobbling still. Gerald Henry moves in on the tackle. We won't see Davison a lot. In fact, he's coming out of the ball game right now. Back in goes Kevin Galbraith. Mm -hmm. The price you pay to play Division I college football. Again, quick snap count. It's Galbraith still on his feet, fighting for more. He'll get close to the first down marker, but not quite. He stopped at the 34-yard line. He needs to get to the 33. Stephon Pace on the stop. There is Bruce Snyder, his first year as head coach of the Sun Devils after an illustrious career in Berkeley as head coach of the Golden Bears of California for the five previous years. Back-to-back bold -back appearances and board. What a huge win last year against Clemson in the Citrus Bowl. I'll tell you, his Bears didn't beat Clemson. They throttled them. Well, that's that's the sign of their team as we watch the measurement guys come in here to give us an idea of whether the first down, how far they might have to go for the first down. But Bruce Snyder's team, ooh, that's close. Ooh, that's so close. But his teams are tough. I mean, he demands that in his players, and it's just sort of part of his character. We saw him signaling him, anticipating we might have to go for the first down. He was signaling the two tight ends to come in there, and that's what they'll be using everybody to just get that one or two inches for the first down. Remember old Johnny Yu? Colts that have the ball third down and about an inch. Unloaded for the end zone. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something I wouldn't be surprised if Bruce Stenner I mean, He's capable of doing just about anything to win. I say it's Grady Benton over the top. That's where he's going. He's got the first down. I'll tell you, Benton took his 6'2 frame up and over Craig Ritter, who's 6'4", 284 pounds. That's the end of the first quarter. 
We are scoreless. Today's first quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western. A rather inauspicious first period of play. SC, three drives, three punts. You look at the Sun Devils, they punted on their first two drives. Thus far, through the first 15 minutes, this game has been dominated by the terrors of the trenches. Well, we said in the beginning it was going to be a raucous and ghoulish game, and as the sun sets on Sun Devil Stadium, it's going to get downright scary. Brady Benton still on his feet, but he's finally going down. Willie McGinnis, he grabbed him at the top side, couldn't hold him, decided to go down to the ankles, and finally Benton went down for McGinnis. That is his seventh sack of the year for the Trojans, their 29th. This guy can do so many things. He can hurt you so many ways. McGinnis, number 55, coming in here, just sort of ducks under there, just grabs a hold of the ankle. That's all it takes. Just trip him up, give him time for somebody else to come in. In that case, McGinnis doing it all by himself. Benton, he is going to hit the turf again. Step on, pace led the charge. There is a huge talent in that defensive secondary for Southern California. He is the leader back there. Make no mistake about it. Well, USC showing they're going to bring everybody, including the safety, Stephon Pace, number nine. When you see a guy coming that quick out of the backfield, that's what a freshman quarterback has got to do. He's got to gain the experience to know this guy's a real threat, and he can get there quicker than most guys when he's up that tight to the line of scrimmage. Pace showing him just how quick he could get there. Let's take a look at that. Almost five sacks a team for this Southern California defense. Benton says, you haven't shown me anything yet. I'm going to go again. Down the field it went. The pass intended for Bob Brasher. He already has one reception today. It is incomplete. Jeff Kopp on the coverage. And Arizona State, after doing a nice job on this drive, will have to punt it away as it stalls at the 47-yard line of Southern California. Here is Steve Roush, the 6'2 senior. Played his high school ball from right here in Dobson High School in Mesa, Arizona. So he can set the kick it away to Conway back at his own 10. Good snap. And Roush looking for the end zone again. And I believe he has got it. Indeed he does. As Conway, with his hands on his hips, shakes his head as if to say, just give me a shot. Just give me a shot. Do you really think they're going to let, let him have the football? Absolutely not. Boy, look at this. Washington, obviously unhappy with Miami, starting to step it out over the uh, Huskies in terms of that number one ranking. California buried uh, UCLA. It was Michigan over Purdue. They were 21-point favorites in that game. A&M stopped Southern Methodist by a bunch, and it was Notre Dame sinking Navy. Estris Creighton. Following Robert Loya and Tony Baselli, and Creighton runs right into Brett Wallerstaff. You know, Creighton did not want to go to Southern California. Had no intentions of going there. He was always kind of a UCLA guy. But once he met Rodney Beat, Rodney says, come on over to Heritage Hall. Let me show you those four Heisman trophies. Creighton said, number five belongs to me. Johnny Jackson in motion to the near side. Creighton has the ball. And he has grabbed at the line of scrimmage and tackled. Shantae Carver was one of the first guys to get to him. With help from Gavin Hill. Well, we talked about how Shante Carver can hurt hurt you on the pass rush, but he's also a guy that can play very well against the run. And this guy here, number 11, Rob Johnson, we've been mentioning Grady Benton uh, for Arizona State. Rob Johnson's right behind him in the Pac-10 in passing efficiency, and number eight in the nation. This guy can get the ball downfield, too. And look at the talent he's got in Conway and Morton. Travis Hanna and Johnny Morton check out of the ball game, and now Southern California wants to call a timeout to talk it over. So as Rob Johnson gallops to the near sideline, we will step away with 12 minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first half. We are scoreless from Sun Devil Stadium. Twelve minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first half here at Tempe, Arizona. Southern California and Arizona State are scoreless. Southern Cal, four victories, a loss, and one tie. The tie coming, their season opener, Jack Murphy Stadium, San Diego. Marshall Ball and the Aztecs of San Diego State. Third down and eight from the 22. Johnson looking downfield, and he's going down. And Sean Pick. Well, on ASU's all-time sack list. And I tell you, 
forget about giving him the game ball. He ought to get somebody's jersey, namely Rob Johnson. Well, number 82 right here, the tight end, Bradford Banta. He just cannot handle Shante Carver, who got an inside, a quick inside rush on the tight end. There's no way Banta could stop him. Stonehouse is going to punt it away, standing at his own one-yard line. Coming to the near side, Gulliver at the 45. He's got it. But he won't get much. Back from behind by Zuri Hector. A 39-yard punt for Eric Gulliver. A one-yard loss on the return. So the Sun Devils, for the third time in the game, Russ, are going to have excellent field position, but quite frankly have been able to do a little with it. Well, they've been getting good position, and you, like you say, they're going to have to do something with it, and I think we're going to see them start to open up the game a little bit more with the pass. You know, that reminded me on the last play with Shante Carver getting that inside rush on the tight end. The first thing you learn as a pass blocker is you've got to step inside, protect that first, and make the guy go to the outside. Shante just too quick for Bont on the last play. Black down all over the place. It will be whistled against Arizona State. Now, there's a man who's been in the coaching ranks a long time, Arizona State's Bruce Snyder. Dead ball. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. We were talking to Bruce yesterday about, boy, what's it like having a redshirt freshman quarterback like Grady Benton? He said, I don't know. I've never had a 73% passer. He didn't have one in Hayden, Jim Everett, Dan Fouts, Troy Taylor, Mike Pulaski at SC, or Eric Dippel at Utah State. Well, he also didn't have this many penalties before with 93 <laughs> averaging number one in the Pac-10, 93 yards per game. That's too much. Too much to give up. First and 15. Bitten tries to scamper out of trouble. Got a receiver downfield. Can he see? Now throws way to two long. Out of bounds it goes. It was caught by Stephon Pace, but it will be an incomplete pass. Pressure by Willie McGinnis. When Grady Benton had Kevin Snyder wide open down at the Southern Cal 38-yard line and couldn't get the ball to him. Well, we've got the officials gathering uh, together. It's sort of a gaggle of the stripe guys over here trying to discuss who did what wrong. A what? A gaggle. A gaggle. It was a, it's a gaggle of, uh, I see. of, of officials. Not, not, officials a, not a group. No, it's a gaggle. I see. And there's a flag sitting right by the gaggle. Those guys are all, I, I was going to say, I shouldn't say that. Disguised as officials. No, they are. They do a heck of a job. We're going to find out exactly who was the bad guy. You know, they don't tell you who it is. In pro football, they, they embarrass the guy. Dead ball, non-contact foul on the defense. Yeah, Jimmy. Okay, who did that? Jimmy did it that time. It was Jimmy's fault. Correction, correction, dead ball, non-contact on the offense. All right, it's on the offense, which is what we thought. He's talking with umpire Jim Coyne. Well, it's Halloween. I guess they can do that, huh? Trick or treat, you know, hand you a treat, then pull it away from you, and then Bruce wants to know what is going on here. I mean, every time they've got in this good field position, you know, where he he starts to drive saying, hey, man, we've got a chance. Yep. Come on, guys, let's keep it up. They do something to shoot themselves in the foot to put themselves back in, uh, you know, whatever it is. What is it now? First and uh, 110, or how long is the field anyway? Well, it is first down. Make it second down and 30 with the ball on the 23-yard line. Triple wide receiver to the top of your screen. Benton makes the pitch at the last possible moment. It goes to Galbraith. Oh, did Grady Benton dodge a huge bullet as Willie McGinnis hit Benton just as he released the ball. I bet there's at least one official out there that was just thinking in his mind in that microsecond when that tackle by McGinnis happened. He almost had him long enough to make it a tackle before. I don't know how the heck he got that ball out that quick, but he was in the grasp. Just not long enough. On third and 25, it is unlikely we will see Benton throwing the ball downfield. That's something ASU has not done a lot of this year. Two wide receivers to the top. Benton, just as I say that, down the field he goes, and it is almost intercepted. It hit Mike Salmon in the hands, bounced up in the air, and Stephon Pace almost came down with it. Eric Gulliford was the intended receiver. And the Sun Devils are going to have to get rid of the ball. This is called creative quarterbacking. You're in trouble. Get it downfield. Jason Seahorn, number 18, was there. 
Salmon was there. You see Seahorn going up, almost had the interception. Gulliford just couldn't pull it out from those three guys. He was outnumbered. He brushed a punt of the way. This may be the first time that Conway will have a shot at a return, and he punts it right at him. Conway's got it, loses the football, and falls on top of it. So Southern California will have it at their own 43-yard line with 10 minutes and 37 seconds to play in the second quarter. The Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. Twilight here in the desert. Southern California and Arizona State. With 10.37 to play in the second quarter, we are scoreless. Along with Mike Haynes and Russ Francis, I'm Phil Stone. Oh, what a beautiful evening we have here in Phoenix. at halftime as we present college football today's halftime report glenn walker will bring you all the scores and highlights of today's action college football today's halftime report coming up when the halftime first down southern california rob johnson looking right comes back left it is caught by travis hannah and he bangs his way inside the 40-yard line grabbed and thrown down by mark brown and lenny mcgill that's one guy that Arizona State does not want to get the ball with any room to run. He's the fastest guy in a host of fast guys on the USC team. Runs the 40 and 4.2. The only guy I've ever seen run faster is a guy named Ronaldo Nehemiah, who ran it, in, I think, four flat and maybe even got three nine. But Hannah, not a lot of room to run here. He catches it, makes a good job of going up for it. You give that guy room, he's gone. On the I formation. Straight ahead it goes. Rob Johnson carries. The center did a nice job. Craig Gibson. When that defensive line of Arizona State moved through the neutral zone, Gibson saw it and did what every great center should do, and that is snap the football. The call will always go against the defense. guys let's not make mistakes but you can't take away that initiative of wanting to get off the ball quick and that has been one of the keys for that Arizona State defense they get off the ball in a, in a hurry first and five the ball is at the 31 yard line Southern California their deepest penetration thus far they have three wide receivers to the right Johnson looks right down the field it goes We told you at the outset, that's a matchup we would see all day long. And this time, Conway won it. Well, I think Lenny McGill, number four, was in on that, too. There's just, as you said, three receivers going down the right side of the, you know, of the field with Conway coming up with it. Number one, getting a little bit of help there from uh, Larry, Larry Wallace. But he's an acrobatic guy. I mean, he just goes up and takes this ball away from midfield, and McGill just can't get to him in time to tackle him before the touchdown. Ford is on to attach the point after. Good placement. It is up and it is good. 9.56 to play in the second quarter and Southern California is on the scoreboard as they lead the Sun Devils 7 to nothing. On that play too, Phil, it was just a straight, you know, pretty much a, a fly pattern down the sideline by Conway. Johnson getting a lot of time to throw it and what, what makes that play happen is Johnson getting that time he can decide when to let that ball go when he knows that Conway's got the best chance of catching it. And in that case, he did. He went up and just got out jumped everybody. Great play, a big play for USC to get on the scoreboard. Now, that is a big play. And Curtis Conway this year has made a career out of it. You go back to the season opener, he had a 22-yarder against San Diego State. Look what he did against Oklahoma, trailing the Sooners 10 to nothing. He got the... Trojans rolling, and they came back and won that ball game against Washington. He had a 53-yard catch against Oregon in a game you saw here on Prime Network. Conway, a 96-yard punt return for a touchdown against California. He had a 45-yard kick return, and look what he did last week against Washington State. A pair of touchdowns, 24 and 27 yards out. When he gets the football, things happen, Russ. Well, he can do it so many different ways, you know, as we talked about. But 
the thing that really comes to mind too is after the three and eight season last year phil this is the kind of guy the coaches have done such a great job has to have all the players in the coaching staff larry smith's coaching staff but coming back from that horrible season and they're counting on well, this baby. play like the kind I of play from this kind of guy who can do it from any you. place on the field Cole ford boots it away down nine yards deep in the end zone. Arizona State will take it at their own 20-yard line following the touchback. It will come with 9.56 to play in the first half. Well, the difference between this Arizona State team that we saw in their season opener against Washington and the team that has taken the field in the last three games, all incidentally victories over Pacific, Oregon State, and UCLA, is that they are finally playing as a team. And they have finally settled on a quarterback with Rower in game one and McGee. Now it is Brady Benton, and that is Kevin Galbraith. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. Well, a moment ago, you saw Southern California roll 57 yards in 41 seconds. Only took them two plays. When you've got a guy like Curtis Conway, it's no wonder. Second down and a long nine. The ball just across the 20-yard line. The clock is running, 9.25 to play in the first half. Benton looks near side throws. It is caught, caught by Clyde McCoy. Boy, is he hit in a hurry by Gerald Henry. Now, Henry, there's the 5'8 sophomore. Listen to this hit. Just listen to what Division I football is all about. That's a sweet sound if you're on defense. If you're on offense, it just rocks you. It sort of echoes through your head. Sound like the Grand Canyon there saying, hello, hello, duck, look out. Third down and five. Benton lets it go. It's hit from behind, and oh, he goes down hard. Benton hit from behind, and yes, he is going to have trouble getting up. He got hit, Phil, from the top and from the bottom, got folded back. Not only did he get hit down by the knees, but he got hit up top and just sort of folded him frontwards and backwards like an accordion. Obviously, maybe knocked the wind out of him. But really, that, you know, when you don't see the guy coming like that from your backside, this can be critical. You see Benton, he's, he's looking, trying to locate his target. He gets hit from the front, from the back. It's a bad place to be. Now the tight end, Bob Reicher was on the receiving end, and now you're looking at Garrick McGee, and he would be the heir apparent if Grady Benton is unable to continue. Like Benton, Grady McGee, Garrick McGee is a redshirt freshman. Benton thus far in the ball game, seven of 10 for 46 yards. You look at what McGee has done thus far this year, not particularly impressive. Well, one thing he does do, we saw Benton do it earlier, run with the football, but McGee is the guy that they say gives them just a little bit more mobility at quarterback, making that defense of USC maybe thinking twice about this guy's unaccounted for. We've contained the running backs. We've, we've covered the, the receivers. Now this quarterback, he can move around too. Now the quarterback spot has been an unsettled spot for the Sun Devils. And boy, that is a great sign if you are a Sun Devil faithful. Grady Benton trotting off the the far side, 73% passer, number three in the nation, number one in the conference. It feels a lot of times you're down there on the field, you've been hurt, you don't really know what it is, everything kind of hurts, and you're, you're, you're concerned, obviously, about what, what may be broken or what may be torn up. In that case, Ben just probably got the wind knocked out of him, saying, I'm okay, I got up, and he realized everything's going to be all right, he'll be back in the football game. Now here comes the pride and joy of Booker T. Washington High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Garrick McGee. First and ten, Arizona State. Straight ahead it goes. Alva dives out across the 37 near the 38. He'll pick up a nice five yards before Shannon Jones, the defensive tackle, cuts his legs out from under him. You know, we may see Benton again, but but McGee, he may he's in the position that Galbraith was last week. You know, this is my chance, I'm in there. He could really do great things. I mean, he is capable of doing that. And if Benton doesn't come right back in, McGee might just uh, beat him out of a job, at least for the time being. Kevin Snyder splits wide to the left. Southern Cal showing blitz. That is Galbraith. 
Boy, did you run into Brian Williams. Brian Williams, you talk so much about Willie McGinnis, but Williams is the guy who leads this Trojans defense in tackles with 46. And 10 of those 46 have been for losses. Boy, is he quick to the ball. They all are. I mean, they, they do such a great job at USC, the defensive coordinators. They do such a great job, Chris Allen and his uh, staff, of shielding those linebackers, letting them make the tackles. Third and three. McGee looks like hit from behind, loses the football. Who's got it? Now the question is, was his arm coming forward? The officials say no, it's a bumble. Southern California has recovered. It is Gideon Murrow who hit him. And Mike Hens recovered the bumble. Well, there's a lot of hitting going on out there. A lot of hitting. The quarterbacks are just not having much of a chance to get the ball downfield. You see McGee trying to get rid of it. Just no time at all. It's, it's, it's a lot of action going on out there. And this is the thing we mentioned earlier on in the game. Those kinds of mistakes cost, it, cost you the game. They just cannot have the kind of turnovers and the kind of penalties that have put them, in, put them behind in the past. 34 to play in the first half. Southern California leads it 7 to nothing. And the Trojans have the football. Rob Johnson is calling signals. The setback is Estris Creighton. Johnson looking over the middle. Now comes to the near side. It is caught at the nine. Yard line by Johnny Morton. His 25th catch of the year. And we saw what he could do against Oregon. He had three TDs for the second time this year. He did it against San Diego State as well to tie the school record, three touchdowns in one game. This guy can do it all. I mean, he's acrobatic. He has plenty of time. There's nothing like being out there just running your pass pattern, looking back and seeing your quarterback with all the time in the world. You know you're going to get the football, and when this guy gets it, things happen. First and goal, SC. The ball just inside the 10-yard line. Estrus Clayton is hit it by him and driven back. Brett Wallerstaff is the first Sun Devil to bend him backwards. You know, I mentioned earlier about uh, the mistakes that, that, will, that will ruin a game, that will lose a game for you, the turnovers. On the other side of that coin, Bill, a championship team like USC, they take advantage of those types of things. And this is going to be the challenge for Arizona State's defense right here. They're up against a championship football team. There's only one game behind Washington, and they're down here heading towards their own goal line. This is a supreme challenge for the Sun Devil defense. Second down and goal. In motion, Mike Mooney. The kid straight ahead. Creighton once more, and he's bent over again. And guess who he met face to face? Number 44, Waller Stat again. You know, the coaches, everybody we've talked to said, this is such a nice guy. He's such an unassuming, quiet kind of guy. Does he look quiet to you here? I mean, I could hear that, that from up here. Here comes Waller Stat. No, thank you. Doesn't need a lot of help. Just bends him backwards. He doesn't seem very nice to me on that play. Those guys need to have a saliva test before the game. I think he's rabid. <laughs> Look at that number of tackles a game. Just over 10. He's got three and a half already tonight. Johnson wants the end zone. Now comes back to the near side. The officials are waving their hands frantically as a flag went down just prior to the snap. And when you see the officials wave off a of play once the ball has been snapped, you can be sure it's against the offense. Now, could it be Tony Vaselli? Ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Well, still in uh, scoring position, you see Hooks almost jumped there. It looks like the right tackle, Tony Vaselli jumped in for a very good reason. Number 13, Gavin Hill, was making a real quick uphill charge at that quarterback. Vaselli just jumping just a little bit before the ball was snapped. Now it is third down and goal the ball outside the 13. They had it first and goal from the nine. Three wide receivers to the right. Johnson looking again and flags are in the air again. This time, I believe it was the left side of the offensive line that moved. You know, you get down in the red zone, as they call it, and you know, we've talked to coaches, why is it called the red zone? You know, the offense would like it to be called the green zone. Red ball, false start, offense, because right now, to the USC offense, it is the, the red zone, because red means stop, right? The left tackle here, number uh, 62, Len Gorecki, just sort of gets up before the ball is snapped. That's a no-no. Now it is third and goal from the 18. Now 
the one plus is it gives those Trojan wide receivers a lot more room to fly. Johnson looking right now. He's got a lot of running room. Cut from behind by Shantae Carver. The hole was there for a split second. Snap your fingers and it was closed. Doesn't take very long. Doesn't take very long at all for the wall to break down, come crumbling down. Johnson finding that out. And the reason that he is having to run with the football, Arizona State doing a great job of coverage. I mean, Johnson had a lot of time to get that ball off. The DBs and the linebackers doing a great job of covering all of his guys as we watch Cole Ford go for the extra point. The sophomore from Tucson has hit six of nine this year. From 32 yards away, it's on the way, and he hooked it. He hooked it to the left side. Whoa, he's Cole Ford hot. That is one overheated Ford. It comes with 4.42 to play in the first half. SC7, the Sun Devils nothing. Bill Cosby will not be happy. Boston College over Temple, 45-6. Syracuse, Hummel, Pitt, 41-10. And it was BYU, look at that, over Penn State, 30-17. Provo, Utah, Grady Benton at quarterback at his first down. Arizona State Sun Devils trail by a touchdown. Draw play, Galbraith. He's got nine, maybe ten. Jeff Cott knocked him down. You notice Cott doing a good job there, too, on the tackle, trying to rip and strip the ball from Kevin Galbraith, who wasn't going to have anything to do with that. He's got 41 yards and 12 rushes. And it doesn't look like uh, there's going to be any huddle here. Grady Benton is back in at quarterback for Arizona State again. Straight ahead it goes. Galbraith has got running room to the 45-yard line and dives to the 48. You know, we were told, uh, Phil, we've been talking to people all week long, different people here in the community, and that this guy doesn't have necessarily a lot of moves, but when you watch the way he makes these moves, he starts outside here, and he just sort of stutter steps right here, breaks inside and right up the field, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Once you make that break, accelerate, you see him just pop it, step, lower the shoulder, get more yards, and hang on to the football because Cobb is trying to strip it. Here's a charm. Let's go for three. This time it is Galbraith met head on by Brian Williams. Williams, number five for the Trojans. Tremendous quickness. I'd say that's an area where Southern California excels. Russ Francis, the inside linebacking core of Williams and Jeff Cox in the back of Gideon Merle. What a trio. Well, we knew there was going to be a lot of physical battles going on out there, and you saw one of them right there with Williams taking on Galbraith. It was not an easy task for the linebackers either because Galbraith can punish you. He puts that head down and goes straight ahead. The ball at the 50-yard line, second down and eight. It is Galbraith again across the midfield strike down to the 45-yard line again. And this time it is Willie McGinnis. You get it. You get the feeling that uh, this guy's going to have another day like he did last uh, last week. I mean, they're using him on just about every play. And if that, there was just one block separating that from another five or ten yards. Willie McGinnis getting there just in time to stop that uh, longer longer game. Galbraith, the senior from right here in Phoenix, 15 carries, 66 yards. Now it is third down and three Sun Devils. Benton looks near side. It is caught. Clyde McCoy has got the first down at the Trojan 32-yard line. Mike Salmon is the guy who wrestled him down. You know, you look at a play like that, Phil, a young quarterback, freshman, uh, Benton, he's, he's making the call at the line. He knows he has to get three yards to the first down. He sees the defensive back playing off of McCoy, makes the audible. You see the receivers talking to each other, coming back with no huddle. This shows a lot of points for a young quarterback. There is Kevin Galbraith as he takes the counter into near the 31-yard line. McCoy only had 12 catches coming into this game. He's got three already this afternoon. Galbraith running right into David Webb. Arizona State with 73 yards rushing. That's not surprising at all. They have been averaging this year over 200 yards a game on the ground, 178 yards through the airways. Perhaps the surprise is that SC is not much to speak of whatsoever on the ground. Short drop. Over the middle it goes. Oh, it is in and out of the hands of Eric Gulliver. Boy, 
boy, there is a pattern that Gulliford has been absolutely perfect in his career at Arizona State. You won't see that happen very often. This guy, as he's coming across the middle, he makes this catch 99.9% .9 of the time. And I think what happens, you see his head come up just as the, as the ball gets to his hands. He's looking upfield because he's thinking touchdown. Great crowd. 55,000 here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Third down and nine. There's the draw. And Kevin Gabbard on a play that took way too long to develop is shot down at the line of scrimmage by Terry McGinn. Which Willie McGinnis and Brian Williams were also in on the play. Well, the Sun Devils, they have certainly shown stints of being able to move the ball and move it very effectively. But when they get down close to scoring range, that Southern Cal defense stiffens. And Mike Ritchie has come on and will try and get the Sun Devils on the scoreboard. If he is successful, it would be a 48, maybe 49-yard field goal. And that would match his career long. The kick is up. Is it enough? No, he put it to the right side. One minute and 23 seconds to play in the first half. And Southern California continues to hold a 7 to nothing lead. Well, the kicker's having a little bit of a problem. Both guys uh, going wide. And that's uh, what you have to expect on Halloween night. Next weekend on Prime's Tough Turf Saturday, Maryland battles ACC Conference leader Florida State. Or Southwest Conference action still to be determined. Check your local listings for the game and the time in your area. Southern California from the eye. In motion, it is Johnny Jackson. The give straight ahead. Chris Creighton is hit at the 34, dives ahead to the 36. The first man to him, the Roverback, Kendall Ryan. Now you get a look at what sunsets look like here on the desert floor. I'll tell you, you can travel this entire country, and for us, we do it. And I'll tell you, the prettiest sunsets, I think, in the nation, right here in the desert. Four. Absolutely gorgeous. Second down and five from the wall at the 36-yard line. Rob Johnson waits, comes to the near side, won't get rid of the football. Oof, was he hit by Israel Stanley, the defensive tackle on the right side, a senior out of San Diego, California. You know, these guys don't get a lot of uh, publicity, Phil, but, you know, at, uh, at that size, 6'3 and 255, when you get a chance, you're trying to protect your linebackers. They get a lot of glory on the blitz. Number nine, right up the middle, just taking taking on this guy, just number uh, 66, Clay Hattabaugh, just taking him on one-on-one. -on -one. That's a lot of satisfaction from beating him, getting to the quarterback in time for the sack. Final seconds of the first half, third and 12, SC. Near side, Clayton. Look out, there are Sun Devils bearing down. And who led the charge? Number 44, Brett Wallerstadt. He is everywhere. That is, he's one of the guys. I mean, there's so many good guys on defense. That's been their strength all year long. And they show why just right there, Wallerstadt. Creighton really doesn't have anywhere to go here. Brett says, you're mine. You're mine. He's dressed up like a linebacker tonight for Halloween, and he's playing the part. <laughs> there he is. We didn't know until uh, yesterday afternoon at precisely 3.05 whether uh, Brett Wallerstedt was going to play. And boy, has he played tonight. Stay with us at halftime as we bring you college football today's halftime report. Glenn Walker has personally promised me that he will bring you all the scores and highlights of today's college football action. And Glenn is in the starting gate. He'll be coming your way in just about four seconds. And now, what do you think he's going to be dressed that fast? Hmm, good uh, question. I mean, he's, he dresses so nice. I just love to watch him on the halftime report. The guy, I just stay here at halftime right here in the booth just to watch Glenn. I, I'm just really curious. Maybe he has an SC cheerleader? You think? He has a leg. Do you think he has nice legs? He doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> now, Southern California, they have an interesting uh, situation here with four seconds left. Does John Stonehouse cut away and give Eric Gulliford a shot at a return? Or does Stonehouse take it and just run sideways and run out the clock? Bradford bent to the snap. Stonehouse will unload it. Gulliford end over end waits for it. He's got it. To go, and that's the way the first half will end. Now, Southern California 
on a pass from Rob Johnson to Curtis Conway. That's the difference in the ball game. At halftime, it's seven nothing USC. Right now, let's go to Glenn Walker for college football today's halftime report. Glenn. Thank you, Phil, and welcome to the College Football Today Halftime Report. And I'm sorry, Russ, but I didn't dress up for anything for Halloween. But let's quickly check out some other stores from Pac-10 Action this afternoon. The Cal Bears all over the injury-plagued UCLA Bruins. The final score was 48-12. to Russell White is now the Cal career leader in rushing yards with 3,065. He broke the old record held by Chuck Muncy. 17th-ranked Arizona, the Wildcats will take on New Mexico State. That game and getting underway just a little bit later. Arizona, the best defense in the country right now against the run. 19th-ranked Washington State, they lost last week to USC, and right now they're getting knocked off by the Oregon Ducks. The score is 34-10, that game in the fourth quarter. And we'll be back with, uh, to give you a bunch of other Pac-10 scores and also what's going on around the rest of the country when we come back. So stay with us. Sixteen times for 59 yards, and that is exactly half of Arizona State's total offense. Well, they've got to get the ball more downfield. They can't keep running him the way that they do because Willie McGinnis, the guys inside, Brian Williams, they are sh shutting down the run almost uh, completely as, a, as the first half winded down. So the ball is going to be thrown in the air by Arizona State. They do a great job in the ground, but they're going to have to test test that USC secondary. Well, the difference in this ball game came with 9.36 to play in the second quarter. USC had the football. Rob Johnson looking right. SC had the trip wide outs to that side, Russ, and he simply unloaded to Curtis Conway. Kevin Minifield, I said, was beaten like a drum when I looked at the replay. Kevin simply got turned around to the wrong side. Well, Mike Haynes was talking to us at halftime, and he said that's the one thing you don't want to do is you cannot turn away from the receiver, and that's exactly what Minifield did, and Conway then just out jumping everybody. Let's go down on the field now where Mike Keynes is standing by with ASU's head coach, Bruce Snyder. Mike? Well, Coach, the first half has not been what a lot of people were predicting. You really played them pretty tough in the first half. Well, our defense playing very well, and, and we're moving the ball somewhat, but uh, the critical zone is hurting us. We're not getting the ball in the end zone and getting points. Well, you found a way to keep Curtis Conway con contained so far. Well, <laughs> he's a threat in any, any single play, and we, we've got to do that this second half. We're going to win this ball game. Well, we wish you good luck here the second half and hope it's not a horror story for you. Back to you guys up in the booth. All right, Mike. Tonight's statistics are brought to you by Chevron. And it's a 7 to nothing game, close ball game, and the statistics are certainly reflective of that. When you look at the first down, the Sun Devils have out first down, the Trojans by three. Rushing yardage, it's an all-Arizona state. Through the airways, the Trojans with a slight advantage. Total yards rush, pretty much a wash. Well, it's, it's, you know, just those one things about the, uh, the turnovers, those have hurt, and the penalties have hurt Arizona State. It's been pretty equal, uh, except for those two things. A pair of young quarterbacks we are seeing in sophomore Rob Johnson from Southern California, four of seven for 90 yards, and that touchdown toss to Conway, while for the redshirt freshman Grady Benton, also not a bad night, eight of 12 for 59 yards. He has yet to throw his first touchdown of the night. Well, you're going to see a lot of pressure on Benton. I mean, Arizona State's going to do the same thing to Johnson, but I think one of the things you're going to see first off in the second half is putting pressure back on the quarterback because neither offense, either Arizona State or USC, has really done much aside from the, the Conway touchdown uh, that this guy threw. There really hasn't been a lot of offense, so they're going to try and, and, and really to hype up that offense, and you're going to see those defenses blitzing and putting a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. Rob Johnson, well, I'll tell you, his thread needle accuracy throughout this 1992 football season has produced 62% completion rating. And that is number two in the Pac-10, right behind Grady Benton. Now back to receive for Arizona State, it is Kevin Galbraith and Chris Hopkins. And to kick it away, Cole Ford, as this second half is just about set to begin. Southern California leading at seven to nothing. Approaches the football high, end over end kick. It is Hopkins at the one yard line. Across the 20, near the 21. And he is smothered there by number 84, Gideon Merle, along with Don Cunningham. Now you look at Arizona State's possession in the first half. Their first four trips up the field with the football. They had to punt it away. A fumble took it away from on possession number five, and then a missed field goal. 
by Mike Ritchie, and the Sun Devils were out of the first half. Well played, first 30 minutes of play by both Southern California and Arizona State. And here comes Grady Benton. He has thrown five touchdowns and five interceptions this year. Straight ahead it goes. That is Kevin Galbraith and Wolf. Is he hit at the line of scrimmage? Actually a yard deep. Jeff Kopp led that defensive charge. Trying to pull a little trick on uh, USC. They, the entire offense left the field for a second. They came back in with three right wide receivers and then trying to spread that USC defense as they again go no huddle. Arizona State trying to put pressure on that uh, USC defense, spread them out with the receivers. It didn't work. Galbraith not getting anything up the middle. Watch how quick they snap the football. It is quick. Brady Benton. Green sets up nicely. Galbraith out of the backfield. He can't turn the corner. Whoa, my. Mike Salmon started the year as strong safety. Moved up to the rover back spot. Has three sacks, has forced a fumble, and got Galbraith behind the line there. It is third down and nine. The ball just across the 21-yard line. They'll call it the 22. And again, Arizona State going with that no huddle, trying to trying to put pressure and confuse USC's defense. Benton looking left side. Now throws. It is caught. Wide open. Kevin Snyder. For the 49-yard line, a first down for Arizona State. Jason Seahorn chased him out. Well, the offensive line of Arizona State and their, uh, their backfield getting plenty of time and protection to Benton here on this pass to find Snyder downfield. Watch how much time he has here. He's just picking his receiver. That is a real luxury for a quarterback, especially a young quarterback that needs all the time he can get to pick out his guy, get it downfield. Snyder here choosing to go to the sideline and not take it up any further. Galbraith to the 45. He was down long before the ball popped out. Arizona State will retain possession. The ball just short of the 45-yard line. Hard to believe that Kevin Galbraith, when you look at what he has done thus far tonight, harken back to what he did a week ago against UCLA, 44 carries, 186 yards. Hard to believe this guy couldn't find a spot over the last four years here at Arizona State. Second down now in five. The ball at the 45. Galbraith, sweep right. Caught from behind and tackled, but not before Kevin rambles for almost five. He pulled Willie McGinnis a yard with him. You know, you mentioned uh, the fact that Galbraith hasn't had many opportunities the last four years, Phil. But Coach Snyder said, you know, there are some players that, you know, they have all these ways of deciding whether a guy's got the talent, he's got the ability. Some players just get better. They don't show a lot in practice. They don't show a lot the first few times they get the football. But give them a chance like UCLA to play the entire game, and they're just fantastic. Galbraith again, and this time he will be shut down at the line of scrimmage by the right corner, Gerald Henry, and he is short of the first down. Now, Bruce Snyder is a master of the fumble ruski, the fake field goal, the fake punt. Question is, is this the right spot to try it? On fourth down and two, the ball at the 42. Steve Roush is on to punt it away. Conway is back at his own nine-yard line. I think SC is sniffing something here. Conway signals for the fair catch. He takes a bounce at the one yard line. It's going to be down there. Whoa, what a job. Roush downs it at the two yard line. It is Kendall Ryan who got his hands on it at the two. Southern Cal will have it, and they're pinned deep. us here at Prime Network. 11.49 to play in the third quarter. Southern California ranked number 13 in the nation out in front of these Sun Devils. Seven nothing. Sparky says it's time to play D. First down. Trojans at their own two-yard line. The tailback is now Dwight McFadden. Straight ahead it goes to West Bender. Six foot, 245 pound senior from Burbank, California. Now the Trojans in the first step. First four times they touched the football, they punted it away. And then they went 57 yards in two plays, capped by the pitch from Johnson to Curtis Conway. They missed a field goal. And then 
A punt on their last possession. Second down and eight from the four. McFadden, whoa, do the Sun Devils close it down? Brett Wallerstadt, along with Kevin Minifield. That gives you an idea how these guys pursue. I mean, you get Minifield coming in from the side here. Everybody playing up tight all the way across the line. The number 44, Wallerstadt, the guy to get in on the tackle. It's nice when you've got a guy like Kevin Minifield to help you out. You know, he's not that big as Brett makes the pursuit. Minifield takes him on first. 44 cleans it up. Third and long. Bender is the up back. And a whole bunch of Sun Devils charged, so you've got to believe somebody on that uh, Trojan offensive line pulled. Brian Hooks was across. Shantae Carver was in the backfield along with Wallerstack. Now let's let the officials sort it out. Normally, Russ, when that many defensive guys charge, somebody moved on the offensive line. I agree. Good ball. Defense. Offside. Whoa. You know, the one thing that you teach your defense as it goes against Arizona State is that it's third down. Let's not give them, you know, a first down or get them close to a first down. Let's not make the mistake. One of those guys, Hooks or Carver, or one of those guys must have seen something move or, or thought they did. Or Rob Johnson staggered his count. Yes. Those quarterbacks are kind of cagey, you know? <laughs> That's not fair. Now it's third down and a long one. Mike Mooney is the fullback. He is right behind Rob Johnson. Mooney's got the ball. He moves it out to the 12-yard line. I believe it'll be enough for the first down. Wallerstedt came up to drop Mike Mooney, the senior fullback. A lot will depend on the spot, and the officials are setting it down across the 12. I think it's a first down. Chuck McFerrin, the referee, has taken a look. And he wants to stop the clock and bring the chains on. You know, I think you're exactly right, Phil. They when you find a team that's as aggressive and as quick on the defensive line as Arizona State is, uh, a lot of teams, a lot of offenses will say, hey, let's stagger the count, let's make these guys guess when the ball is going to be snapped, especially in short yard situations like that, where it's third and about a yard. Looks from up here as if he got it by about the length of the football, and indeed he did. It's a first down for Southern Cal. Now Larry Smith, his sixth season as head coach at Southern California. 17 years as head coach. Delane, Arizona, and now Southern Cal. First down Trojans. The ball at their own 12-yard line. Johnson rolling left throws. It is caught. Johnny Morton. Correction, it is Bradford Banta, the tight end, for Banta, his second catch of the night. Adam Brass. And Kevin Minifield combined to bring him down. And a Trojan is slow getting up. Direction it is a Sun Devil, Kevin Minifield. Well, when you come up to uh, make a tackle on a guy like Bath, who's 6'6", 245 pounds, Minifield's outweighed by, uh, oh, about 65 pounds there. He's 5'9", 180. You've got to really pick your spot on where to hit him. It looks like... Uh, Kevin taking the brunt of the impact here as they work on his right arm. You see Minifield come up to make the tackle. You've got a, looks like he might have taken a knee right in the bicep, right in by the shoulder, but he was kind of sitting on his heels prior to that tackle. That'll stop the clock with 9.56 to play in the third quarter. Minifield being tended to. Backing up uh, Kevin Minifield's Chris Hopkins, who is a true freshman. Well, I can tell you one thing you're going to be seeing here real soon if Minifield leaves the football field. He's the guy that's been covering Conway on a lot of those uh, pass routes that Conway and Morton have been running. If uh, Minifield leaves the field, watch for the ball to uh, get into the air. Yeah, that's a good point. Lenny McGill will probably come over and, uh, and take Curtis Conway on the man-to-man -man, uh, formations. Well, what they've been doing is they've been using Minifield man-to-man -man as we watch Banner. Watch him put his arm down. His left leg looks like he goes right into the bicep and shoulder of Kevin Minifield, but they've been using Minifield on a man-to-man -man coverage unless it's to the wide side of the field, then they've been doubling up on Conway on the wide side. Travis Hannes puts wide to the right. He draws single coverage from Lenny McGill. In motion, it is Yanni Jackson. Counter straight ahead. Dwight McFadden, his second carry tonight. He is hit by Wallerstead. 
And Wallace at 44, again, doing a great job. He does, he's so quick to make that read. I mean, a lot of times inside linebacker will read the guard or he'll read the action of the running back. There's sort of a counter. He gets right past the guard, excuse me, the tackle, Len Gorecki, just sort of swims right over the top of him to make the tackle, but he fills so quickly. Boy, Waller sat at 235, just swatted Gorecki out of the way. Gorecki tips in at 285. Second down, a long nine. McPatton across the 30, near the 31. Knocked off his feet by Adam Brass and Mike Fair. That's kind of scary. Uh, that guy, uh, number 44, David Webb for Arizona State. He's he's dressed up for the evening. Excuse me, USC. He's dressed up for the night's occasion. He's the uh, he's a counter there to Brett Waller's We the saw him. Floor. We saw him do that against Oregon in uh, in block daylight. Line of Arizona State. Adam Brass finally caught up with him. Another young player in line for the uh, for the well for the heralded tailback position. McFadden, just a freshman, six feet, 185 pounds, takes the corner and accelerates. Also, you'll see a running back once he gets upfield in the open, he'll just start to widen out towards the sideline as the guys try to pursue him, just to try and get some extra yardage. Freshman out of Lutton, Oklahoma, Dwight McFadden. First down, Southern California at the 43-yard line of Arizona State. Johnson looking to the left side, looking for Conway, now steps up and he's going down. Johnson runs for five to the 38-yard line. Mike Fair and Gavin Hill combine to drop the sophomore out of Mission Viejo, California. Good story on Rob Johnson. He was one of the nation's most celebrated high school quarterbacks coming out of El Toro High School in Mission Viejo back in 1990 after playing, really, Russ, just one year of uh, high school quarterback. Spent his junior year at a wideout spot because a guy named Stenstrom was quarterbacking El Toro High. <laughs> Steve Stenstrom of Stanford. From the back side, Johnson goes down, completes the pass. Excellent pressure on the uh, backside of Rob Johnson. That is only Struthers' second catch here in 1992. You know, you see a play that works so well like that, and you say, well, God, everything was done right, but Johnson taking a heck of a shot from Brown number 30, paying the price to get that ball off to Struthers. Now they said his knee went down at the 18. Pitch comes near side. McFadden inside the 15 to the 10, still on his feet, and finally popped out. By Kendall Ryan at the six-yard line. Okay. Everybody wants a chance to prove themselves, Phil. I mean, you get a young player like McFadden here. You put him in a situation, a game as crucial as this for USC, just one game behind Washington, and that's where the, a real champion, a real competitor will shine. You see McFadden, he's following the block, following the block of his fullback, Wes Bender, just to perfection. Just You see that end line, they, they get excited. Their eyes kind of light up. They start breathing heavy. Trying to score a TD. 6.54 to play in the third quarter. The Trojans have eaten a lot of the clock here at the third quarter, and they are on the threshold of taking a 14 to nothing lead. Six fifty-four to play in the third quarter. Southern California leads it seven to nothing. They have the football at the Sun Devil five. It is first and goal. McFadden to the short side. Inside the five dies for the goal line. Touchdown, Southern Cal. As we talk about that championship second effort, you get close to the, close to the goal line, you got to make it work. And McFadden doing just that. Looked like he might have been stopped uh, short of the goal line, just putting his head down and going in for the touchdown. This is what it takes. You know, you follow Bender, the guy number 45. He knocks one guy down, gets up to try to make another tackle. But two guys getting a hold of uh, McFadden there and Gavin Hill, 13, trying to push him out of bounds. McFadden wouldn't have anything to do with it. In for the TD. Cole Ford 
to attempt the point after from the hold of Corby Smith. It is down. It is perfect. So with 6.49 to play in the third quarter, it is now SC 14, Arizona State nothing. Let's go down now to Mike Haynes, who is standing by with a guy who knows a great shot when he sees one. Mike? Talking about great shots, how about long drives? I'm standing here with Phil Mickelson, an outstanding collegiate golfer, and uh, actually turned pro this summer. Yeah, about uh, four months ago, middle of June. Well, Phil was awarded here tonight with the Fred Haskins Award. It's kind of like the Heisman Trophy of golf, and it's something that you've won three times. The only player to do it besides you is Ben Crenshaw. Well, yeah, he did it uh, about 12 years ago, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm excited. Uh, it's been, you know, I'm awfully happy with uh, my uh, career here at ASU, and uh, obviously I'm a diehard Sun Devil fan, otherwise I wouldn't be here at the game. I hope that uh, we can suck it up a little bit and come back. Well, they could use one of your long drives, like I said earlier. 99 yards, uh, SC, on that last drive. How do you feel sitting down here on the field watching your old Trojans, I mean, your Sun Devil uh, fans playing and watching? Well, it's a little different perspective, because I am not. I don't have to study. I can go home, you know, stay out late and uh, wake up late in the morning. And, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, because, you know, you want to do so much. You want the team to win. Uh, and, and there's really, it's a helpless feeling, but I am excited about what uh, Coach Snyder has done. And I'm looking forward to a uh, great uh, career here for the football program. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Phil, and back to you guys in the booth. What a dream for Phil Mickelson a year ago, winning the Tucson Northern Telecom Open as an amateur when he was still playing golf for Arizona State. End over end kick. Kevin Galbraith waits for it. He's got it at the one-yard line. He's coming out. A tremendous return by Kevin Galbraith. That guy is all heart, Phil. You give him a chance to touch the football. He's the running back. He's been doing so well last week and again this week, running the ball out of the backfield. Now here he is on the kickoff return. Give me the football. Chucks one tackle, dodges number two, puts his, uh, puts his shoulder down up over the 40-yard line. Great field position for Arizona State. Sun Devils with the ball at the 41-yard line. No huddle offense. Here comes Grady Benton. Sun Devils trailing 14 to nothing. Looking near side throws. Gulliford got it and out of bounds he goes at the 48-yard line. Well, he just out sprinted number 26, Gerald Henry, and the rover back, Mike Salmon. Now, Southern California, look at the time they ate up here in the third period. Five minutes. They went 98 yards following that great punt that was down at the two-yard line. Dwight McFadden from five yards out. The redshirt freshman with his first career touchdown as a Trojan. Kevin Galbraith is level by Brian Williams. And I mean level. Somebody decided that Galbraith was going to get the ball, and it had to be number five, Williams. Let's listen to how it sounded. Those helmets are made of very hard plastic, and in that case, went right in the Galbraith's stomach, and never knocked the wind out of it, make it hard to get up and go on. I was hungry prior to that shot. <laughs> Third down and three. number 55 and another pretty fair Trojan wore that number a fellow by the name of Junior Seau yeah he did a pretty good job of watch McGinnis on this he just takes number 40 Marcus Soward and runs him right back into Benton just completely just demoralizes the Arizona State offense for the fourth sack of the day Steve Roush is on to punt it away on 4th and 10 with the ball just across the 40-yard line. And Curtis Conway is the man who awaits it. Conway averaging 12 yards per punt return. And here on Prime Network just a few weeks ago, we watched Curtis Conway take an Oregon punt at his own 4-yard line and picked his way 96 yards the other way. Boy, that was some run, too. That, uh, first of all, Oregon didn't get down there to cover it right away, but when he got a hold of it, he was gone. You know, tonight's a big night. It, tonight is a historic night. Not only is it Halloween, Olympian. it is also... Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Also, Russ, this is the 12th anniversary of a huge event in college football. Tell me. Come on, pins and needles. The wave began 12 years ago at Husky Stadium in Washington. 
Huskies and Stanford. In fact, that rivalry resumed today, and boy, did the Huskies win it big. Well, Coach Snyder there's got a little wave of nausea rolling over <laughs> him if they don't get something going on offense. That's a good one. Conway at the 23, he's got it. Instead of going out of bounds, he puts his helmet down and dives back into the 27, a 43-yard punt. We're coming back. Southern Cal has the football. <laughs> Ghostly. Trojans, 14. Sun Devils, nothing. Let's go to Mike Gaines, Mike. Well, Phil, Kevin Minifield, the starting defensive back for Arizona State, they took him inside for x-rays. Something is definitely wrong with his back. I, don't, I doubt they'll be able to return here in the second half, and that is a real severe blow to the Arizona State secondary, especially we consider he was the guy that was going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Conway most of the night tonight. Now, good point, Mike, and he is also the fellow that a year ago had the game-ending interception to preserve the Stubbles 32-25 win over Southern California at the Coliseum in 1991. Johnson looking long, and is almost intercepted. Great position by Marcus Soward. He's the dime back. He got in front of Larry Wallace, had the ball in his midsection, and couldn't hold it. Well, these are the opportunities you really pray for. I mean, the ball's thrown a little bit short. Marcus just, he's backing up. I mean, it's hard to bring that in. It's just tough to bring this pass in, in all fairness to him. Plus, he's a defensive back. They don't get a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities. And guess what? The receiver's pulling him back at the same time, saying, if I can't catch it, you can't catch it. And there's a look at the true freshman out of Rialto, California. It is second down in 10 from the 28. Wait, McFadden. He gets to the line of scrimmage, and his momentum will carry him to the 29. Kendall Ryan, the rover back, moves up to knock him down. So Southern California, he's now with a third and long situation. Now you look at the Trojans on their two touchdown drives. They went for 155 yards the rest of the game. Look at what that Sun Devil defense has done to the Trojans. Limited them to 65 yards. right Wallerstadt and Mike Bear that inside linebacking duo dropped them in a hurry well McFadden uh, we look at Dion Struthers one of the other SC running backs he's limping to the left it looks like a left ankle but on that last play it looks like Dion's out for the game he's taking his pads off they're cutting off his shoe and all the wrappings they're trying to run McFadden to the left Shante Carver is turning it back into Wallerstadt up the middle tonight averaging 41 yards good snap Gulliford awaits it at the 30-yard line calls for the fair catch and fields it flawlessly a 40-yard punt there will be no return you know every week get an inside look at the NBA Prime Network's NBA action brings you player features dynamite dunks and news notes and quotes from all around the NBA so tune in every week for NBA action right here on Prime what a crowd. What a night here in Tempe, Arizona. Crowd in excess of 50,000. What a beautiful, beautiful evening. When we began, the temperature was 79 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Now the temperature right around 70. Single back offense now for Arizona State. That's Galbraith. He crosses the 30 and he knocked off his feet, grabbed by the shoulders. Darren Galloway, the junior defensive end. You know, people are going to say, Phil, why is Arizona State being so predictable? You know, running Galbraith and they throw a little pass, run them again. Uh, they don't have a lot of options. There's a lot of guys hurt. There's only so many things that Bruce Schneider and his offensive crew can do to keep USC out of the backfield, to keep them spread out so they can make some yards upfield with just two minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. You know her, Russ? Coming to the near side, here's the reverse Gulliford. Everybody's got 
got that play, but that looked like it's right out of the USC playbook because they've been running Curtis Conway on that kind of play. Gulliford, that's a long way to go, and what a line. The line set up a great wall as Galbraith hands it off to Gulliford here. You can see John, uh, excuse me, Ben number 10 trying to put a block out there for him, but that, that's what we're talking about, keep the USC defense off balance. That's one way to do it. This guy can do it. At the 46-yard line, Gulliford gives the Sun Devils a huge first down. Bitten, there's a three-step drop pass down to the 40-yard line, intended for Clyde McCoy. But oh, did he have great coverage by Roverback Don Cunningham? That slant pattern is one of the most feared patterns by any receiver when it's called, especially when McCoy is that close to the linebackers in the middle of the field, you just sort of have to suck it up and say, well, I want that football. Just too many guys there at that time for Benton to get it to him, you know, in order for him to make the catch. Second and 10 from the 46. Split back formation for Arizona State. Benton, seven step drop. Now sprints out of trouble. Looking right. Throws down the far sideline and unloads the football. And wisely so. He was pursued by Terry McDaniels and Darren Galloway. Daniels, there he is, the defensive tackle out of Altadena, California. Now it's third and ten from the 26. Brady Benton, 11 of 17 for 99 yards. He has not thrown an interception, nor has he thrown a touchdown. The Sun Devils are coming in on the wings of a three-game winning streak. They beat Pacific 39 to 5, took out Oregon State, and then went over to UCLA and whipped the Bruins 20 to nothing. Cook at the 48 yard line, Gulliford. He had to come back to get it. He saw his quarterback in trouble. Gulliford turned around. Gerald Henry was suddenly behind him, and Benton threw a strike. Well, Benton gets nailed here as he lets go of the ball. This is tough going to the left where right handed quarterback stops and just fires it with everything he's got. And watch Gulliford just sort of get landed on here, right on the football. This is knocks the wind right out of you. He does a great job after he makes this little hook play, coming back to the ball, finding it, keep coming back to the quarterback. That's what's caught to every receiver. Fourth down. Benton, this time, rolls right. Under pressure, comes back to the left side, and is caught. Bob Brescia, tight end. Touchdown, touchdown, Sun Devil. Your 46. Ryan Ryder, number 85. Larry Smith. Brady Benton, the fans. Everybody was surprised on that play. There's two tight ends there. It looked like it might have been going to Ryder. Brasher comes up with it for the TD. Mike Ritchie will attempt the point after. From the hold of Adam Brass. What a play by the red shirt freshman Grady Benton. Richie tacks on the icing. And with 11 correction, 142 to play. In the third quarter, the Sun Devils are on the scoreboard. It's 13th ranked Southern California, 14, Arizona State 7. You know, USC really doing a good job of coverage, Phil, but the two tight ends are kind of crossing down the field. Benton here getting good pressure from Willie McGinnis. Throws the ball just almost similar to the last pass. He kind of threw it off the back of his feet. You see the two tight ends crossing each other. They almost collide. It was good coverage. Brasher just coming back in time to catch it. Nobody between him and the end zone for the TD. Now Grady Benton knew right away when he saw his two tight ends cross. Ryan Ryder in front of Bob Brasher. And Brasher on a dead run scooped up the football and it was a foot race to the end zone. Only the second touchdown pass caught by a Sun Devil tight end this year. And for Grady Benton, that is his sixth touchdown pitch of 1992. Benton to Brasher. It also might have been an early Christmas on Halloween because it looked like it could have been to either one of those tight ends. so glad you saw me. <laughs> well, I surprised everybody, I guarantee you that. 
And that's what the uh, Sun Devils needed was some kind of a boost from their offense. Mike Ritchie to boot it away. That is Curtis Conway. He's got it at the five. Sun Devils lose contain across the 40-yard line and finally tackled at the 49. You know, Phil, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's easy to say from standing up here, I'm not on the field, but why would you kick the ball anywhere near that guy? I mean, he has got the ability to, to break it as he just did. The ball was kicked right to him. I mean, I'd kick it, take the chance of it going out of bounds, kick it to the other side. Maybe that's what they tried to do. Conway, 68 yards on that return. Actually, that is 68 return yards on the ball game, and that was a big one to the 49-yard line. First and 10, Trojans. From the near side, McFadden is lassoed at the round line of scrimmage. And Brett Wallerstead led the charge. I'll tell you, Brett Wallerstead, he is a force. Coming into this ballgame, Russ Francis, he needed only 30 tackles to break Nathan LaDuke's all-time record here at Arizona State. And he must have at least a dozen tonight. Uh, he got a little bit of help there from Galvin Hill, but Brett Wallerstadt was the Butkus Award uh, nominee for Arizona State. He didn't make the final cut, but he's showing us tonight that he does have the talent to be one of the top linebackers in the Pac-10 and possibly the country. That's Chris Creighton is back into the ballgame. We have not seen Creighton in a while. To the flats, it is intercepted by Arizona State. Lenny McGill has got it. Out of bounds at the 32-yard line. What a great piece of defense by Lenny McGill. When you're going to teach how you play cornerback, Russ, I'll tell you one thing. That's a piece of tape you'd want to show a young cornerback. Here comes Larry Smith. He, he's trying to get McGinnis away. An altercation on the far sideline. Now the Sun Devils are retreating, and the Trojans are walking backwards to their side. Well, it looked like number 80, Morton, for USC, was involved in that play, and he wasn't very happy at all. I saw him grab somebody's helmet from the Sun Devils and kind of toss it to the ground. Uh, McGill just taking that ball away from the receiver. If it was Morton, they were right there hand in hand, and maybe Morton thinking it was inter uh, excuse me interference, but you know the defensive back has every right to the football as much as the receiver does, as long as he's not bumping him on the way to the ball. Lenny McGill, 6'3", 190 pounds, and he has given the Sun Devil offense a great shot at the 32-yard line of Southern California. And boy, watch the work McGill does. The ball is just on a rope, just thrown right flat out there. Number 19, Hannah. McGill just comes up and takes it away. I mean, he steps right in there. You know, on behalf of Rob Johnson, you just can't see McGill. Look how he just slides right in front here, just right in front of Hannah. Wallace steps there for the block. Just takes it off for the uh, possession for Arizona State. They need that type of thing, those type of turnovers, that kind of field position as we come down to 39 seconds in the third quarter. Lenny McGill, his fourth career interception, his third this year. He's the guy that recovered Duran Washington's fumble in the end zone last week to preserve that shutout over UCLA. A couple of huge plays in successive weeks. It comes with 39 ticks remaining in the third quarter. SC had taken a 14 to nothing lead in the third period. Arizona State came back with a touchdown a few moments ago, and now on the turnover, they are 32 yards away, Russ, from possibly tying this game. Also, too, I mean, that could have been a real mess out there. You, you know, tensions are running high. This man here, Larry Smith, showing a lot of class. He got on the football field, told these guys, hey, get off the field. They, they've got the ball now. We just have to stop them on defense. 32-yard line, Sun Devils first and 10. Brady Pitton looking down the middle, now comes to the near side, Eric Gulliford had a shot at it and couldn't come down with it. Great coverage by the leader of that FC secondary, Stevon Pace and Gerald Henry. That ball simply hung in the air too long. That was in the air a long, a long time, Phil, and Pace, number nine, and Henry, they just get up 
right there with Gulliford, there really isn't a lot of room. That's a battle. You know, that's anybody can come down with that, and that scares the heck out of you as a coach when you see your receiver, single receiver, covered by two guys like that. Bruce Snyder saying, hey, I'm sure glad that we came out of that with just an a, a incomplete pass. It is second and 10 from the 42. Three-step drop, Benton bump once, goes a second time, it is cut. Bob Brasher again. What a night for Brasher. His fourth catch on the evening for 60 yards and a touchdown. You know, it kind of comes in uh, in waves as a tight end, Bill. You know, some days you don't see a lot of action, and then all of a sudden, quarterback back decides you're kind of a valuable guy and you get to catch a lot. Josh, your short can do short a touchdown. He ran that pattern. It was kind of like a little hook. You saw that and pumped the ball. Then he broke to the uh, sideline. Very first, very close to first down. Just two yards on third down. Third down and two. Flags are down. This is going to be against, I believe, Arizona State. Steve Bush, the number three tight end, was down in his three-point set and then stood up. And they're going to walk it off. Illegal procedure. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Still third down. Five-yard penalty. About the only thing you can do there, and that's the last thing Arizona State wanted with that kind of field position. As a tight end, if you come up off the ball, stand up and take a step out or two, because you can move. This is what has been hurting, hurting Arizona State all year long. Look at those penalties. Now third and eight. SC looking blitz, and here they come. It's caught. Gulliford has it and dropped it. Could not hold it. Great pressure. Willie McGinnis was on top of Grady Benton. And that forces ASU into a fourth and eight situation. McGinnis, he is everywhere. Don James told us a couple of weeks ago, the head coach of Washington, that Willie McGinnis, in Washington's game against SC, caused the Huskies to change 60 to 70% of their offense. Here's Richie. He missed from 48 yards earlier tonight. This one from 46 yards away. Sun Devils to within four from 46 yards out. Well, he really put his leg into that, too. He missed the one from 48. You know he wanted this one bad. And if you're going to have the kind of problems, those kind of penalties that knock you out of scoring position on the offense, at least you can come away with three, these three points. Like you said, put them within four points. Southern California entering this game. A record of four victories, a loss, and a tie. Three wins in a row coming into Sun Devil Stadium tonight. While for Arizona State, Bruce Snyder's Sun Devils also on the wings of a three-game win streak. Now the Trojans, as I told you at the outset of our telecast, you better jump on that horse in the first and third quarter because in the fourth period, they have shut people down. They have allowed a total of seven fourth quarter points this season. And with the kind of depth they have, though, this is where you're going to watch a thin offense and a thin defense on Arizona State maybe wear down a little bit because USC can just keep coming after you. Creighton and Conway are stacked one in front of the other down inside the 10-yard line. Richie not sure where to kick it. We'll send it to the right side. It's still bouncing around. Who's got it? Curtis Conway has got it at the 10. Whoa! kickoff return yet this is it for the night and he's pretty darn close to the uh, goal line you see the ball kind of well close to the five yard line excuse me picks it up here going about go. 95 yards for the touchdown this is why 
special teams coach is always saying you've got to stay in your lanes. When you go down there, if a guy gets blocked out of a lane or leaves his lane because he thinks that uh, the ball's bouncing around the ground, that's where the discipline comes in. Stay in your lanes because you cannot give this guy any opening at all. The point after is good, and this crowd here at Sun Devil Stadium is stunned. Now, Bruce Snyder, when he met with us yesterday, Russ, he said, hey, I know what Conway can do. He took a deep breath and said, we just have to hope we can contain him. They have not contained him. Five returns, 163 yards. Well, he's going to be USC's Heisman candidate for next season. I mean, he's their top receiver. He's their top pickoff return guy. He just showed us why. He had that 96-yard punt return against Oregon. He's a top returner in punts. He gets the ball and reverses out of the backfield. He will also play quarterback for a while, and throw the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that uh, sometime this season. He can do it all. You know when he started working on his moves, he said before he ever started playing football, when he'd be walking home, he used to try and dodge leaves when they'd fall out of trees. He used to try and make a move to miss the leap. And he said, even before you even start thinking of football, that's the way I started my moves. I think he was talking to Jerry Rice. I mean, Jerry probably did that type of thing. <laughs> and uh, Jerry Rice has made the comment, I've been watching this guy Conway for a couple of years. He has got exceptional talent, exceptional ability, and he's only getting better. Now Bruce Snyder's been watching Curtis Conway for the last couple of years, too. Previously at Cal, now here at Arizona State. And I know what Bruce Snyder's looking forward to the day Curtis Conway gets that degree. Gone. Uh, yeah, what a great talent. I think you were right at the outset of our show. You said you thought this guy, if he can stay healthy, he may be FC's fifth Heisman Trophy winner come 1993. Oh, boy. Does he put it deep? There'll be no return. You know, I'm thinking, too, Phil, when we're talking about Curtis Conway, an unhappy thought for Coach Larry Smith. Will he be here in 93 to possibly win the Heisman? I'm sure that a lot of NFL teams are taking a good, hard look at Curtis Conway. Now we talked with Southern Cal Athletic Director Mike McGee before the start of the game, and I, I broached that subject, and he said to me, almost without a shadow of a doubt, he said, I really have to believe that Curtis Conway is going to come back for his senior year. Boy, there is a look at a great talent. Well, you've got to respect the guy that wants to finish his education and also continue to contribute to the... Uh, to the success of his team, and boy, is he improving year by year, game by game. First down, ASU. Brady Benton looks left side, now goes right. And he is dropped at the 13-yard line. That is the final play of the third quarter. It's Southern Cal 21, Arizona State 10. Tonight's action-packed third quarter notes are brought to you by Great Western. Oh, what a flurry of activity. ASU's Bob Reicher, a 37-yard touchdown reception on fourth down. And then SC's Curtis Conway, a 31-yard touchdown reception and a 95-yard kickoff return. And look at the total yardage now. Arizona State with a 30-yard advantage in the game, but they are 11 points shy on the scoreboard. As we begin the fourth period, 21-10 Southern California. Galbraith in the backfield. Willie McGinnis. You know, we had an opportunity to, to meet and chat with Junior Seau down in San Diego before their season opener against San Diego State. And Seau told McGinnis, number one, take care of my number. And number two, Russ, play like every game's your last game. Well, he's playing like every play is his last play as he meets uh, Kevin Galt in the backfield. This guy... He's in there before the ball almost gets to Galvis' uh, stomach. He just makes the tackle three yards deep for the loss. Third and 18. Benton looking down the center of the field. And it is caught. Frazier again to the 45-yard line. What in the world is a tight end doing 35 crosses downfield? Doing it the way you used to do it, partner. <laughs> That's where they're supposed to be. <laughs> Looks like he gets up, his arms uh, a little uh, hurt, but he goes right down the seam. This sort of splits that USC defense, which is spreading out to cover the wide receivers of Arizona State, leaving just one guy, Jeff Kopp, on the on the coverage on Brasher. And that's, you know, they're going to have to need that. That's his fifth reception for 105 yards. This guy's showing at 6'5", 240 pounds. He's got the speed to get down the middle. And what a beautiful touch by quarterback Brady Benton. Boy, did he lay it in there. 
Here it comes to the near side. It is Kevin Galbraith. He moves it across the 44 down to the 43. Mike Salmon tackles Galbraith. Galbraith a week ago carried the ball 44 times against UCLA for over 180 yards. Tonight he has carried it 24 times for 68 yards. Oh, the going has been tough in the trenches for Galbraith. It sure has, and that's why you got to use a guy like Brasher. You know, you don't get a chance to tight him very often to show people say, well, you just don't have the speed. He got downfield there about 30 yards just in time, but he got there, and that's the key for a tight end. Use the guy down the middle. We're going to have to use him more in this game. Benton looking to the wide side, overthrows Gulliford. They ran Kevin Snyder on a clearing pattern, both the corner and the free safety bit, and Gulliford was wide open underneath. And Benton was saying hello again to 55 and 35. Willie McGinnis and Jeff Cobb, they've been in the backfield all night long. It's amazing that Benton, number one, is standing, and number two has the poise to stay in there and throw that pass. I'm surprised Benton doesn't tell Bryce or Bob, let's, let's, let's alter this pattern. This time I want you to go down four yards, break it over the middle. Somehow slow up Williams and McGinnis this time. Benton rolls left, throws, got something on it. Oh, what a catch! Clyde McCoy takes it to the 20 yard line. Jason Oliver on the cover. Benton somehow, someway, miraculously got the football in the air. You know, they they don't uh they, they don't uh make freshman quarterbacks like this you, you see McCoy coming to the sideline spinning and just eluding the grasp of Jason Oliver just for a second but Ben was running to his left had to stop on his heels again and he fired that ball about 15 18 yards downfield 15 to 24 175 yards first down Sun Devils Ben looking right got Gulliford can't seem to find him now throws and it is incomplete at the four yard line Jason Oliver finally caught up with Gulliford, but a split second sooner, Eric had about a three-yard lead on Oliver. Boy, if you throw that a second, split second later, Oliver, number four, might have come up with that ball. It was one of those soft little floaters, you know. You just don't want to see that as a receiver. There's going to be a lot of people by the time you get to the football. A lot of people are going to meet you there when it gets there. Second down and 10 now. The ball at the 21-yard line. There's the situation. 13-04 to play in the game. Double wide outs to the right side. Benton over the middle it goes. Gulliford has got it at the 19. A gain of two. Eric Gulliford ran a long way to pick up two yards. Brian Williams said two yards is plenty. You're going down. Well, you're exactly right. That is a long way to go. It's not very efficient when the quarterback's scrambling for his life and Gulliford just makes two yards on the play, but it keeps you moving. It keeps the offense. It gives you some momentum going down there. And they've been having a little problem inside the red zone here, inside the 20. This is going to be the test for Arizona State. They need it down by 11. It's third down and seven now. The ball just inside the Trojan 20-yard line. Double wide receivers to the right. Snyder to the left. Up it goes. Snyder get to it. Oliver running step for step with Kevin Snyder, the senior from Fontana, California. Well, you kind of knew that type of play was coming. The ball had to get up quick, Phil, because USC on third down inside of 20, they were bringing just about everybody. And Jason Oliver, number four, doing a good job of just sort of blanketing the receiver there knowing that the quarterback's going to have to make a dead-on throw to get it over his head for the touchdown. Didn't make it. Richie, one of two tonight. This one would be from 36 yards away. Toby Mills will snap it. Adam Brass will hold it. Richie lets it fly, and he's got it. From 36 yards out, Richie connects. 12 minutes and 11 seconds to play. It is now Southern Cal 21, Arizona State 13. to play Southern California 21 Arizona State 13 and what is noteworthy about that 36 yard field goal by Arizona State coming into the fourth quarter this year USC had only allowed seven points in all six of their games
fourth period. Out of bounds it goes. So now Southern California will have a decision. Do they take it at the 35-yard line or do they force Arizona State to back up five yards and boot it again? Now I've got to believe Curtis Conway wants to know the same thing. Look at Conway. That 95-yard kickoff return, he now has eclipsed Anthony Davis's mark. Set way back in the early 70s. Conway's touchdown today. The Trojans' kickoff. first kickoff return for a touchdown bounds. since 1974. Can you believe it? That was the year of the game that Trojan fans call the comeback. Trailed Notre Dame 24 to 6 at halftime. Anthony Davis took the second half kickoff, and boy, that ignited an SC comeback. 55 24 over the Fighting Irish. First and 10. Straight ahead it goes. Somebody jumped on the defensive line. I believe it was Israel Stanley. He got back on side. By the time Craig Gibson snapped it, Rob Johnson went ahead for a yard, but Stanley was back on his side of the demilitarized zone, so there is no penalty. Second down and nine. White McFadden has checked into the ball game, replacing Esther Strayton. As we told you, Dion Strutter has been lost for Arizona, pardon me, for uh, Southern California. Kevin Minifield has been lost for ASU. Here's McFadden, tries the right side, turns the corner, and runs out of bounds. At the 41-yard line, Adam Brast is the guy who shoved him out. That stops the clock with 11.45 to play. Scores around the nation. Washington, boy, do they throttle the Cardinal. It was Washington State losing big to Oregon in Pullman. California continues to blast the Bruins of UCLA. Ooh, what a year it has been for Kerry Donahue. Michigan over Purdue by just a touchdown. In a game, Michigan was favored by three touchdowns. Third and five. The near side, it is cut. Travis Hanna goes out of bounds at the 49. A first down for Southern California. Texas A&M, no problem at all with the Mustangs in Dallas. And whoa, look at this one. Number 20, Florida over number 7, Georgia, between the hedges, Nebraska. And Colorado, no contest at all. Did the Buffaloes show up? And Notre Dame knocked off the midshipman 38 to 7. Boom, Nebraska handling Colorado like that. 11.32 to play in motion to tight end Young Jackson. Straight ahead it goes Dwight McFadden. And the Sun Devils shut it down. This is a Sun Devil defense that coming in is allowing only 135 yards rushing a game. Well, they've been doing it all year long and all game long, and that's what they're going to have to do to stop uh, SD. They came in with a two tight end set, basically saying, hey, we're going to run the ball at you. There's still 11 minutes, 15 seconds left in this game, but Arizona State's down by a touchdown and, and a field goal. They're eight points down, so they've got to get back to football, get good field position for the score. Three wide outs to the right side on the comeback pattern. Curtis Conway now takes it back to the outside. Across the midfield strike to the 45-yard line, he goes. I mean, how appropriate, Phil, on, on Halloween night. This guy looks like a ghost, I'm sure, of those Arizona defenders. On that kickoff return, it looked like he was in the grass with about three or four guys. The same thing here. He gets the ball, comes right back to the quarterback. There's a bunch of guys right there getting ready to make a tackle. He just spun around and said, hey, guys, he makes something out of nothing. That's that's a sign of a real great athlete. He's got two guys out there blocking in front of him, Wallace number one and Travis Hanna, but he makes most of this all by himself. Third down and five. Rob Johnson looking left and down he goes. Flip Waller stack. Where would the Sun Devil defense be without him tonight? Well, he's getting a lot of help by guys like number 95, Brian Hooks. Now we're going to watch Wallace said right here. He's normally playing this line right here, but right now he comes right in on the blitz. He makes that thing happen all by himself. You're going to watch him just sort of sneak in there. He kind of sneaks around there. Hooks is, is kind of making the, the offensive tackle take him, saying, go ahead, Brett, it's all yours. Trojans have got to punt it away. John Stonehouse. Under pressure, that is Gulliver. Bear catch called for at the 17-yard line, and again, he fields it flawlessly. Arizona State will have the football when we come back at their own 17-yard line. There's 9.35 to play. 
The Pac-10 Game of the Week is brought to you by Diet Pepsi with 100% aha. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby, aha. Uh -huh. And by Great Western's family of companies, $38 billion strong. Great Western will always be there. Next Saturday, we'll be in Palo Alto, California. Our Pac-10 Game of the Week will be the Trojans of Southern Cal as they take on this man, Glenn Milburn, and the Cardinal of Stanford. That's next weekend, the Pac-10 Game of the Week, right here on Prime Network. 9.35 to play, fourth quarter. SC 21, Arizona State 13. The Sun Devils with the football at their 18-yard line. Benton looks near side, looking for pressure, and he can't get it. Brasher got behind Jeff Kopp, who had great coverage on the tight end, but Brasher has made some incredible catches tonight. I thought one more was certainly in the cards. <laughs> well, he got that his right hand out, just stopped the football, and just, just almost there. Very frustrating. He knew Kopp was breathing down his neck as he broke to the outside towards the sideline. He was hoping to stop it long enough to get the other hand there. He needed some of that stuff that Mike Haynes and Lester Hayes used to slap on their hand before they made it illegal. That's different. Now, wait a second. Mike never used that stuff. <laughs> Hayes, yes. Michael, no. <laughs> There's the screen. Sets up nicely. Caught out on the near side. Tom Hardraker took it out at the third the direction the 22-yard line. The gain was about five. It'll be third down now in five. Well, and, and Jeff Kaiser, number 75, uh, Hardraker here just waiting for Kaiser to show up. Made a great block, gave him about three or four more extra yards. You want your offensive linemen out there. They're the big guys that can clear the way for you. And that means less guys hitting you when you've got the football trying to make the first down. This is a huge play for the Sun Devils. It's third down and a long six. Benton again, the three-step drop with time. Wants to come near side now in big trouble. Looking for McCoy. Under throws the coverage. That's heartbreaker again. Tries to get across the 30. He's got the first down. Freshman, there is Heartbreaker. He's a senior. But I'll tell you what, I like what I have seen by this young man out of Mesa, Arizona. Well, talk about effort, talk about poise, talk about making something happen. And you said this was a crucial first down. They need to keep this drive alive to have any chance. You see Tom Heartbreaker here, number 32, the fullback. Now he's got, he says, this is mine. I've got to get this first down. Benton again comes to the near side. McGinnis has got him. He throws the football. He can't get to it. McGinnis wants credit for the sack. He didn't know until he rolled over and got up that Benton had gotten rid of the football. You know, Larry Smith wants intentional grounding. Well, there's... There comes McGinnis to see him on Galbraith, just pushing him right back in the quarterback. I mean, at that point, you know, Galbraith knows he's outmanned by McGinnis. He's got to cut him. He's got to just get his feet out um, underneath. He can't take him up high like that because he drove him right back into the quarterback, and that was very close. Luckily, there was a receiver supposedly in the area where the ball was thrown. Second down and 10. The ball at the 31-yard line with 8-12 to play in the game. Fans in, now throws, it is caught, and guess who? It's his tight end again, Bob Brasher. Brasher played his high school ball at Point Loma High School in San Diego, California. Coming into this game, Russ, he had 13 catches on the year. Tonight, he has almost half that many, six. Well, he's well over 100 yards, and he's showing right here that he can catch the ball in traffic. That's one of those high balls that's tough to catch, and he knows he's got good field awareness. He's Flashing for the first down, knows exactly where to go to get it. From the 43. First down, Sun Devils. Option near side. Across the 40. It is Kevin Galbraith. He had one man to beat. If he could have gotten one more step ahead of Jason Oliver, it would have been a foot race to the end zone. And a real tribute to that USC speed on defense. Because Galbraith here, as you said, he's going right up here to the middle. If he breaks that tackle, he's gone. But these guys have got speed all the way through here. They follow him up the field to make the tackle. Otherwise, he could be gone. You'll see him start out to the right on the option. Now cut right up the field, right where you're supposed to. But that speed is just too much to run away from. First down, Sun Devils at the Trojan 45. Galbraith is the setback. Benton looks to the left side. 
Now comes to the right side. McCoy kept correction. It is Kevin Snyder. He's got the football, and out of bounds he goes at the 40-yard line. Gerald Henry with great pressure on uh, Grady Benton. You look at action here in the second half, Southern California pretty much continuing to do what they did in the first half, but Arizona State has doubled their first half output. Well, they've been moving the football very well, Phil, but they just have not been able to get in and score, and that's one thing that, uh, as a timeout is called by USC, that's one thing they've not allowed any score points to be scored in the second half. We'll be right back. California 21, Arizona State 13 with 7.23 to play in the ball game. Grady Benton at quarterback for Arizona State throughout this football game and what a brilliant job he has done. Likewise, Rob Johnson for Southern California. Second down in five. Sun Devils just into the split back formation. Benton comes to the near side and pressure can hold it. First pass that the big tight end has dropped tonight. He is six for seven and a touchdown. Well, you know, Brasher has done so well. This is just a little quick out pattern. There was an audible at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Stephon Pace, number nine, came up to the line of scrimmage showing blitz, and that kind of gets everybody excited. They know there's a big blitz going on. Your mind's going a 1,000 miles a minute. There's a lot of distractions, so uh, we'll give him one drop after all those nice catches. Option near side. Galbraith again. Loses the football, and out of bounds it goes. Ryan Williams is the guy who laid the pads to Kevin Galbraith. The Sun Devils will retain possession, but it'll move the football back to about the 43. Well, the one thing that's been difficult for everybody all season long against this tough Trojan defense is getting to the outside. They have so much speed there. They've just got everybody, you know, coming to the outside like that. It's so tough to, you know, to get to the outside. Mike Salmon and knocking the ball loose from Galbraith. Fourth down. Fourth and eight at the 43, and the Devils say go. Benton loses the football, and down he goes. There are no flags. The Trojans have held, and it was Willie McGinnis who led the charge. I mentioned at the top of our telecast that Willie McGinnis has made a career out of crashing parties, and he shows you a good example of that right here. Right up the middle. Benton doing everything he can just to get rid of him. Kim is saying, hey, listen, where's the receiver? Benton saying maybe roughing the passer. I mean, that was a good, solid tackle. Yeah, Willie McGinnis. What a tremendous force. is to Arizona State's defense what Willie McGinnis is to this Trojan defense. And you're, always, power. and you're always talking about exactly right, Bill. You're always talking about the, the offensive players, the Conways and the Galbraiths and everything else. But these are the guys, the McGinnises and the Wallsteads, that give them field position to do those wonderful, magical things that those offensive players get to do. They get to score. It's because of the hard work of guys like this. Brett Wallerstedt, number 44. No gain on the play. It is second and 10 from the 43. Trojans out of their patented eye. Dwight McFadden bounces to the outside, wants to turn the corner, can't do it. Marcus Soward, the dime back, the true freshman from Rialto, California, chased him out. Well, a more experienced running back might have kept the ball in field. They to try and run the clock down with six minutes, 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And GSC, I know, wanted to run as much time off the clock as possible just ahead by eight points. Now that Trojan defensive line sitting listening to their defensive line coach, Kevin Waldhausen. Telling them that they have got to hold them when they get back in there. It is third and six now. And the Trojans want to take a breather and talk it over. And Rob Johnson, the sophomore signal caller from Mission Viejo, will come over to discuss things with Larry Smith. And while they step away, we will too. There's 6.25 remaining. 6.25 remaining in the ball game. Southern California 21, the Sun Devils 13. 
third down and six at the 47 yard line. Trojans with the football. Johnson rolling left under intense pressure and down he goes. Shante Carver. He must have worked in a grocery store. That man knows sacks. Boy, he is quick. You know, he showed that he can play against the run. He's just taking on the, the left tackle. Excuse me. The guard goes right by him. Look at this. He just, the quarterback doesn't have a chance to get him fire the ball. Shante Carver in his face. There's a man who led this conference a year ago in sacks with 11. And six coming into this ball game, and he's got three tonight. The punt it away, John Stonehouse. That is Eric Gulliver back at his own 27. Good snap. Almost blocked, and the punter's going down, rough on the punter. What a huge mistake for the Sun Devils. Gulliver brings it back to the 28, but it will go for not. It's an automatic first down. The Trojans will keep the ball, I believe. That's what happens when you're trying to make things happen. You're trying to block the punt, make something happen, and he got right into the punter's face. Stonehouse takes a hit just as he gets the ball away. Trying to avoid him, trying so hard to avoid him. But it'll be a fully against Arizona State. And most importantly, it will give the Trojans the football. Personal foul, rubbing the kicker, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. Now there's the guilty party right there, Larry Boyd. And Snyder saying, hey, you've got to bend over backwards to miss the punter. You can't go barreling into him. you got to miss him, partner. Yeah, that's easy to say, though. You I bet. mean, Boyd goes through the line, right through the middle of the line of scrimmage. He's trying really hard at this point to just get the punter. Now he's got all of his momentum going forward. When he gets his hands up, look at him turn. He's trying to miss. His feet are not on the ground. He can't control his body position. He was trying to turn. The first down for Southern California. The ball at the midfield strike. The give goes to the short side. That is Wes Bender, that six foot, 245 pound battering ram. And he takes on Brett Wallerstadt. And I'm not certain who won the battle. I think I could tell you who would win the war. And it would be Wallerstadt. He doesn't give up many, does he? Well, you're seeing a good one tonight here on Prime Network. And we are certain we'll have another good one a week from today in Palo Alto. Stanford Stadium as the Cardinal and these Trojans of Southern California get set to lock on. Bill Walsh will not be a happy man by week from today. Second down and long done. McFadden. For the 44 still on his feet. He runs for about seven. Kendall Ryan, the roverback, brings him down. what penalties have done to the Sun Devils tonight. Look at this, the Sun Devils penalized over 90 yards a game. They're the most penalized team in this conference today. They are right on that average. Well, you think back uh, to the third quarter, Phil, when that penalty was called against Arizona State, deep inside the 20 against USC. SC had to go, uh, I think it was third and eight. The penalty brought him up to third and one. They made the first down and went on down to drive on and then score a crucial penalty. The 34 yard line and Wallerstadt is there again with help from Kendall Ryan. And that is Bender slow getting up the fullback for, for SC. Well, he leaves himself, you know, fully exposed here. He's got he's just he's kind of wearing half his uniform. It's, it's a wonder he hasn't been hurt more. He's kind of, he just looks like his hip. It might be kind of a hip pointer thing. He's wearing hip pads, but sometimes they just aren't thick enough. Mistakes, mistakes for Bruce Snyder's Sun Devils as he contemplates these final three minutes and 38 seconds. That is Mike Mooney, the backup fullback. He's a senior, 235 pounder. Runs into Gavin Hill. And now the Sun Devils want to stop it. The clock is stopped with three minutes and 32 seconds left. Well, way back in the second quarter, Curtis Conway on a 31-yard pitch from Rob Johnson got Southern California out in front 7 to nothing. It stayed that way until the third period when Dwight McFadden rambled five yards for his first touchdown as a Trojan. And that up the ante to 14-zip. 
And then it was ASU's turn. Bob Brasher on his fourth catch of the night, 37 yards away from Grady Benton, made it 14 to seven. Arizona State, late in the third quarter, got a 46-yard field goal to whistle through the uprights off the toe of Mike Ritchie. That made it 14 to 10. Still third quarter, Curtis Conway took the ensuing kickoff 95 yards. The Sun Devils had him at the five. He scooted free and went 95. That's what made it 21 to 10. And then in the fourth period, Ritchie with his second field goal of the evening from 36 yards away made it 21 to 13. And that's where we stand with 332 to play in the game. You know, and they've done all this, the SC Trojans still, they've done it amazing comeback from last year's 3-8 and eight record. They've done it having the toughest schedule. They've been voted as having the toughest schedule in the nation. And they've done a heck of a job coming into the second half of this Pac-10 season. As many points as they have and holding teams down like they have against Arizona State. Dwight McPatton tucks it inside. He's inside the 20-yard line. Cut from behind and down by Adam Rath. If it's not Estrus Creighton, it's Dwight McFadden. If it's not Dwight McFadden, it's Dion Struthers. It's not a matter of containing one SC tailback. And they all run so differently. That's the difficult thing about it is the linebacker is trying to get a, a handle on these guys. McFadden, he looks like he's caught in the backfield. He just sort of dips a shoulder, dips a hip, kind of like an OJ move. You know, kind of swivel those hips around and then accelerate. On the 18-yard line. 32 to play. Now the officials, the clock never wound on that play. There was three minutes and 32 seconds to play before Dwight McFadden ran to the 18. You know, you're an Arizona State offensive player right now. You're sitting on the sideline. You're looking up at the clock. There's three minutes and 32 seconds left. You're praying for your defense to do something big, make something big happen, a turnover, get us the ball back, give us one more chance to make this drive to go down and score and maybe an onside kick to this within field goal range, but as an offensive player, you're just praying for your defense, and Arizona State's defense has in the past come up with a big play. Now, Bruce Snyder looks so dapper yesterday in that sport coat. He's a little haggard tonight, doesn't he? Boy, he has been through a tough night. Well, let me tell you something about Bruce Snyder. He was one of my coaches at Oregon, Phil, and this guy lives and breathes football. He lives and breathes every play that his players go out there, offense and defense, special teams. He's a player's coach. Uh, he's their best friend, as well as being the authority figure on the team. He knows so much about this game. He's a fine coach. I can't say enough about him. The reason he looks haggard is because he was up all night last night, up early this morning looking at them, getting ready for this game. He wanted to win this game very badly. I'll tell you the other thing you have to love about Bruce Snyder is uh, when you call a meeting and you want to get in to visit with Bruce today before the game, he clears the decks. We were in there yesterday for better part 45 minutes almost an hour and the only reason he had to leave is he says hey i got a meeting i got a team meeting you got to go to you guys need anything else uh, what a gentleman well he's up against the southern california team tonight that in the fourth period alone has scored 50 fourth quarter points and has allowed a total of 10. so bruce snyder knew exactly what we did early on runs and that is if you don't get on usc early don't expect to ride the horse late well, exactly right. They have, uh, as you said, outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter, allowing very, very few points, and they're showing that again today. Uh, Coach Larry Smith from USC has got his fine-tuned uh, machine, the Trojan offense, spooled up here in the fourth quarter. Uh, he's quite, quite a fine coach. He's got a, a heck of a coaching staff, and they're just tough. I mean, they've got the personnel to go along with the coaching staff. Now you see Chuck McFerrin, he's trying to get the word to the timekeeper to reset the clock. We're just not certain what they're going to reset it to. There was 3.38 to play before McFadden rambled it down to the 18-yard line. Well, I saw the official over on the sideline talking to Bruce Snyder, and I think he's uh, voting for it to go back to 15 minutes, which is where it's at right now. He's hoping for just a little extra time in the fourth quarter. I don't think they're going to do it. You think they'll leave it there at 15 minutes? It's Halloween. Now Chuck McFerrin is going to tell Bruce Snyder, we're going to wind the clock down to somewhere in the vicinity of 325. And Bruce is going to tell Chuck, could we make that 325 in the third quarter? Right. Or just leave it where it's at so it's 15 minutes. Of course, now, Coach Smith here is, uh, he's not going to have anything to do with that. He'll go up there and reset the clock himself if he has to. <laughs> Now Larry Smith in his sixth year at the helm of Southern California. 
You know, Bruce, uh, par pardon me, Russ, Larry Smith was a, a two-way end for the Flying Falcons of Bowling Green back in the early 60s. Well, he looks like a football player. Yes, he does. Oh, absolutely. He's got those big, strong hands and wrists. We were talking to him the other day. You know that he's played a little football. And he's there just like uh, Bruce Snyder's with his players every play of the game. Now Chuck McFerrin still a little bit uncertain now as he discusses things with his Pac-10 officiating crew exactly where this clock should be. Well, these are the gremlins we talked about earlier that are pulling around the clock. I want to remind you, next Saturday, Russ Francis, Mike Haynes, and I will be coming your way from Palo Alto, California, our Pac-10 Game of the Week. We'll send these Trojans of Southern California in the Stanford Stadium to take on the Cardinal and Glenn Milburn. That's next Saturday, right here on Prime Network. Now Southern California, they get Stanford next week before going back to the Coliseum in Los Angeles to take on Dick Tommy's Wildcats of Arizona, who incidentally are playing tonight down the road a piece against New Mexico State. And then they head for the Rose Bowl to meet UCLA before wrapping up this 92 campaign against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Boy, talk about one heck of a schedule. They've, they've been voted to have the toughest schedule in the nation, and look what they're doing with it. Sun Devils of Arizona State, they've got three games remaining after this one. They travel to Pullman to beat Washington State. Mike Price's Cougars upset today at home by the Ducks of Oregon. And then they're right back here to take on the Bears of California. That ought to be an interesting game as Bruce Snyder takes on his former team. And then they're going to wrap it up right down the road at Arizona. But right now, that man right there, Larry Smith, is most concerned about the final three minutes and ten seconds that remain in this one. His Trojans out in front by eight. Now you talk about Arizona playing at home tonight against New Mexico State. New Mexico State's nickname, the Vampire Aggies. Yikes. They are 4-0 oh at night here in 1992, 0-4 oh in the day. <laughs> How appropriate, Ooh. especially on Halloween night. Arizona's in trouble, huh? I'll tell you. Now, this has taken an unusual amount of time. Well, Kent Bayer, there right next to Bruce Schneider, the uh, defensive coordinator, he wants to get in on it and see exactly how much time his defense has to try and get the ball back. Boy, he's done one heck of a job with this Arizona defense. Second to the Pac-10, one of the top defenses in the nation. You can give a lot of credit to Kent Bayer and his, uh, his assistant coaches to help him there in the, in the uh, defense. Well, I think we're going to see a lot of slashing, cutting, diving here, Phil. They're going to try and blitz as we work down to two minutes and 50 seconds. Arizona State's going to have to try and knock the ball loose. The USC, of course, is well aware of that. They're going to try and keep things going as slow as possible. Let that clock wind down. And it's going to be all possession football, nothing out of bounds. Don't get out of bounds. Keep it on the field of play. Run the clock down. There's the time remaining in the ball game. That's the tight end in motion, Yanni Jackson. McFadden again comes this side, and he is rolled down by Waterstaff once more. And again, the Sun Devils are going to stop the clock. Arizona State, the third and long. And that is their final timeout. Brett Waterstaff. Win or lose, he has had quite a night. Well, he wasn't even supposed to play when we came in yesterday. He uh, had a back spasm, a back condition. He came into the coach's office later in the afternoon, hadn't practiced all week, and what a game he's had. 17 tackles tonight for Brett Wallerstadt. And there's his defensive coordinator, Kent Bear, standing there, along with head coach Bruce Snyder. And now their dilemma is what kind of a defense do you call? And while we wait, we will tell you Boston College beat Temple today 45 to 6. It was Syracuse all over the Panthers 41-10. BYU upsetting Penn State in Provo 30 to 17. South Carolina eked one out over 
The Volunteers of Tennessee in an upset in Kansas knocked off the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. It was North Carolina by a touchdown over the Fighting Terps. And Texas, 44, Texas Tech, 33. And right here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe with two minutes and 13 seconds to play. It's 21-13 Southern California. McFadden is grabbed and spun down at the 15-yard line. Kendall Ryan brought him down. Gavin Hill was right in there too, number 13, as he kind of limps a little bit. He tried to strip that football from McFadden, and that's what the defense is talking about in the huddle. Let's strip the ball loose. As we see Mr. Ford, number 14, come out. He's got his engine running smoothly now in the fourth quarter, trying to make it. 24 to 13. Bradford Bato will snap it. Corby Smith is the freshman holder, number 10. And there is Cole Ford, a sophomore from Tucson, Arizona. The ball is at the 15-yard line. We've got a flag down on the far side of the field. Delay again. Yeah, it's going to be a delay a game Offense. against Southern California. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Now it's fourth and 12. That's immaterial. The fact remains, Cole Ford simply has to add a little more juice. Trading off a little distance for time. It's kind of like flying. So you want altitude. Trade speed off altitude. In this case, it's distance for time. Now, now we're going to have the clock changed again. It needs to add two seconds now as Cole Ford is. Uh, Gonna have to wait a couple of minutes. Now it's set at 135. That gives him time to deal with his demons out here on Halloween night. The worst thing for a place kicker is to have to wait. To get out there, think you're gonna kick it, have it all in your mind how it's gonna work, and someone says, wait a second, the clock isn't right. Let's put two more seconds on. This officially from 38 yards away. Good snap, it's down. Ford and it's blocked. Into the end zone it goes. And Arizona State will have the football at the 18-yard line. I'm not certain who blocked it, but I believe it was Brian Hooks, the defensive tackle, who was up on the line of scrimmage and got one of those big paws up. Well, it looked like either, it was either Hooks or Shante Carver. It was Carver number 98. He got up off the line, and that was kind of a low kick, but Shante getting up the the block you'll see him right to the right of the center go up with his right hand and just knock that down that is real exceptional effort on the ha behalf of the defense you know they've done a lot of things right all night they just had penalties they've made some mistakes but they played right along with this exceptional usc team first down asu brady benton pressure loses the football and is open and the sun devils recover david webb is the guy who who knocked it free. He's the one who caused the fumble. And boy, you can thank Greg Thurston for covering it. Well, Arizona State cannot afford to have any more time run off like this. Benton just has to get rid of the football. In that situation, when you're backed up and you only have a minute and 30 seconds left, if you can't get the ball to somebody, just get it, get it, uh, just throw it away. Greg Thurston doing a great job of covering it up. Scary things happen down that football field. We just took a look at number 44 for USC. David Webb, he's kind of a scary guy. Now you see Bruce Snyder telling his offense, play smart. Don't take these kind of penalties when you need eight points and you're 90 yards away with just a minute 21 to get there. 21-13, Southern California. Again. This time it is David Webb, his fifth sack of the year. Well, you know, a terrible place to be for an opposing quarterback is backed up that far with that little time left. We saw USC against the University of Oregon sack the quarterback 13 times because they got him in a lot of situations like this where USC knows they've got to throw the football. Benton again. He's going down. Trojans record the safety, and it again it is David Webb. Snyder can't believe it. There is David Webb, a guy who's so
surfs for conditioning. That led to his second passion, weightlifting. He says you can't surf if you can't weightlift. And both of them have certainly helped his acceleration off the ball. Well, he surfed the high waves of glory and, the, you know, ecstatic. Watch him when he gets up after this tackle. He's just ecstatic about it. I mean, he should be. He's a heck of a player. And that's what SC has done all night long. They have really just taken control of the game when they most needed to. Webb coming in here, gets a hold of Benton. He's lucky he got that ball, even was able to hang on to it the way Webb hit him. Now the guy he slipped around was Jeff Kaiser, the tackle. Oh, there is an excited Trojan defense. You know, they're a fine football team, Phil, but you've got to, the, the Arizona State guys have got to continue to believe in themselves because they played fine football against a very tough Trojan team. They just made too many mistakes. Well, it's no fluke that the Sun Devils came in here riding a three-game win streak. That guy there is going to produce a winner here at Arizona State, and I'm going to predict that. He's got his work cut off for me because he's got to coach against guys like Larry Smith at USC. I'll tell you, his magic worked wonders for the Bears of California. And there's no question in my mind either, Russ. You're right. Uh, Bruce Snyder's finest days uh, are still to come here at Arizona State. You know, there's no stat for it, but a guy overcoming adversity with some of the problems they had at the beginning of the season here at Arizona State, with some of the players not being able to play for a variety of reasons, injuries, I mean, just everything happening that could go wrong and to be, you know, coming to this game with a three-game win streak really speaks highly of Bruce Snyder and his coaching staff. They just ran into a, a, a horse that was loaded with a lot of weapons tonight and just was not going to be beat. Now Southern California fully expecting the onside kick and you can be sure that Mike Ritchie will not disappoint them. Sun Devils are down by 10, 23-13 with 43 seconds left. So do you put it up in the air or do you try and bounce it across the field? up by a Trojan, and they'll have it at the 26-yard line. The guy who covered it was Joel Scott, a backup wideout. So it has been a gallant fight for the Sun Devils of Arizona State. They gave it everything they had. They were down 14 to nothing, came back in the third quarter with 10 unanswered points to make it 14 to 10 before Curtis Conway decided to gear it up. He said, the Sun Devils got close enough. Larry Smith said, let's pump up the volume. And Conway responded, going 95 yards with the ensuing kickoff. to make it a 21 to 10 game. And from then on, it has been all Southern California. So Larry Smith and the Trojans Bruce are off to their fourth consecutive win. While the Sun Devils will regroup after winning their previous three as they get set to take on Washington State a week from today. Now, as we look around the Pac-10, Washington over Stanford at Husky Stadium, California took out UCLA. It was Oregon surprising Washington State. And in the second quarter, Arizona is snuffing out the lights of the Vampire Aggies. 14 to nothing over New Mexico State. You know, as we watch USC come up for probably their final play, Phil, it's been all or nothing for Arizona State. In their losses, they've allowed 129 points. When they've won, they've only allowed 18 points. So it's either all or nothing, but like you said, it was a balanced fight. They just ran into a tough USD team. Final score, Southern California 23, the Sun Devils 13. We'll return to Sun Devil Stadium in a moment.